evening, everybody. Welcome to the May 30th Board of Selectmen uh, meeting. Tonight we'll have our usual select Selectmen's liaison reports and comments. We'll open it up for public comment, if any. Our town manager will have a few things to say. At 7.20, uh, we'll approve an intermunicipal agreement with Wakefield for a shoot uh, shared food services director. Save that 10 times fast. Yeah. Uh, 7.30, we'll appoint a... Um, a new member to the RCTV board will hear an RCTV report at 7.40. At 8 o'clock, the Town Forest Committee will speak, followed by the Trails Committee at 8.15. And at 8.30, we'll take up the subject matter of the Human Rights Resolution uh, discussion. We'll approve minutes at, uh, uh, for the May 16th meeting. And uh, there's no executive session tonight. Yeah. Hopefully, that'll be it. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to remind you more recently, I'd asked you about a week ago if I could just make a couple of remarks at the beginning and then have the two chiefs speak. Absolutely. Um, last week, as many of you saw on TV, uh, you know, Reading was on the nightly news several nights. Um, I want to make two observations before I turn it over to the chiefs. Um, the first is, although they were on the news, they're doing the same work they do all the time. It doesn't always get news coverage. They weren't working any harder or any differently than they do every night. So I want to certainly thank them for that. I especially want to pass along, though, an observation I heard from, from one of the law enforcement agencies outside of Reading at the uh, pipe bomb scene uh, last Wednesday night, it seems like a month ago. Um, what they said uh, to those in, in the audience, including myself, was they had never seen a scene, a scene prepared as well by any law enforcement organization. And their expertise is to go to bomb sites. So they said, Reading Police and Fire did the expert job. They walked in and they could do their job and walk out. They said they have never seen that in any incident in Massachusetts before. Um, they said sometimes they come upon bomb scenes and pretty clear the police and fire don't even really know each other. He said, let alone do they know each other here, they work together really well. So I want to compliment both chiefs and the training they've instituted uh, for getting that kind of a statement from an outside agency. Good evening, Chiefs. Uh, as you know, last Wednesday night, approximately 6.04 p.m., we received the call of a uh, potential pipe bomb on Rachel Road. Uh, our officers responded, the fire department responded, myself as well, uh, the fire chief as well. Um, and uh, it turned out at that point, a few hours later, not to be a bomb, but we had no idea at the time what it was. Um, it's still, I can't really discuss anything really further when it comes to the actual investigation because this is currently still an open and active investigation to how <coughs> what happened that night. But um, if you have any questions at all that we can answer, we'll be able to answer a little bit out. I just want to commend you separately from Bob. I, I, I was getting texts during the afternoon. It was just amazing um, what the amount of training that must have gone into that and the execution you guys demonstrated. You guys play like you practice, and it was on display for just about everyone else. So thank you very thank much you. for your dedication and attention to detail. Thank you. Thank you. Did the uh, fire officer that, that first arrived he did all the right things, and um, it, was, it was Lieutenant Blackman, and he knew right what to do, you know, to, to do, do an evacuation, jump with the police department, bring in some other resources that we have available, and it really went smooth, and I think it's because we're really looking to work well together, and it's a message that both Police Chief and I want to want to deliver down that we, that we can deliver these. That we want to work well together and, and provide the best product we can. So, um, and we have really good mutual aid partners that we draw from both on on the fire side and the EMS side and also on the police side. Uh, we use North Reading to help us for uh, EMS during that incident, and um, because our ambulance was tied up because it had to be there for the scene for, for our procedure. It's amazing, it's amazing to hear Bob say that in other towns, the fire chief and the police chief may not even know each other, and that their individual troops may not even cooperate. We not only expect you guys to know each other, but to like each other and cooperate. <laughs> <laughs> and it just works. Uh, We're working on it. It's yeah. a like the like it part. It's <laughs> the most I, I, I will say this, though, is, uh, as the fire chief said, we also had North Redding Police, Woburn Police, uh, Storm Police helping us as, uh, as well that evening. And uh, as Bob was contesting, he was there for most of the evening. We had several emergency calls come in as well while this was all going on. And it really, if it wasn't for the help of the other departments, it would have been very, very, very difficult to manage the town that night because it really was 
we had several calls, but then it took more than one officer to go to and fire officer to go to as well at the same time. It, under helped. it underscores the point you've made before, which is your staff. But if you get enough of these simultaneous demands on your your time, it becomes very challenging. Right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To that point, I think that a um, couple of things. First of all, fortunately, I was coaching a baseball game and my phone was in the bag when that started. By the time I was done, it was over. I mean, you guys just don't fool around with it, and that's really uh, you know it's. It, it's really quite remarkable what you're able to do. It's kind of it seems to be the Reading way, do a lot with a little. Um, but to the point that, um, I mean, we needed to bring other jurisdictions in, and it speaks to the issue of manpower. Both of your departments are continue to be short, and we're going to need to do something to support both of your departments in that regard as we go forward, in my opinion. Absolutely. That's something yep. we're going to have to look very seriously at because the most important thing that goes on in this town, you two guys do, and that is ensure the public safety. And, and you know, that's the number one job of government is to ensure the public safety. And we've got to be sure you got all the tools you need to do it. You guys do a great job. And the people do. Thank you. Thank you again. Any other comments from the board? And Barry. especially, um, you know, we had a lot of cooperation from the surrounding towns. I'm sure when they're dealing with issues, you guys are jumping in and offering assistance, which means that maybe we're leaving ourselves a little bit short uh, here in town. But obviously, there's a great working relationship between you and the other communities, which also doesn't happen all the time. And, and the fact that you all probably talk to each other um, and share kinds of things sort of you know, augments the, the, the staffing that we have in the individual department. So that's also a testament to getting along with your colleagues and, and working hard, so. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I just said it. I can't add to what's okay. been said. Thank you. Anything else, bud? Mm -hmm. uh, members of the public? Will there be any public input during the human rights discussion? Uh, there will be a section for public comment, absolutely. Okay. That, that'll start um, sometime after 8.30, so. Uh, any other comments from the public for the, uh, the officers here tonight? All right, thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. All right, liaison reports. I'll start to my right, Dan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's see. On May 17th, I attended the Board of Health meeting. Uh, the big topic of discussion is uh, putting some restrictions on pesticide use uh, by private uh, entities on town owned land. The specific concern there is that pesticides are being put on tree lawns, uh, children playing on tree lawns that may not be expecting to encounter uh, bad substances, pets are walked there. Uh, so they're looking into uh, best practices in other towns. So that's, that's the major topic under discussion there. Uh, I just wanted to give a reminder of upcoming events. Uh, Kathy, you're here. Please add if you've added any other sessions. Uh, the cable TV focus groups will be meeting next week. Uh, come one, come all, who want to give some input as to how we should structure our new uh, contracts with our cable TV key providers. Uh, so Wednesday, June 7th from 3 to 5 p.m. and Thursday, June 8th from 1 to 3 p.m. and those being held at the RCTV studio? No. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Wednesday is at the um, high school library. Okay. And Thursday is at um, the town library, uh, 1 to 3 and then 7 to 9. Thank you very much. Yeah. I just want to compliment my fellow selectmen who were here over the weekend. I was not, uh, I, I saw the pictures and read about the speeches. Looked like it was very well attended and uh, good hard work by but, all of you folks. Yeah. Yeah, it, was a, it was a great day, great day. <coughs> all right. Um, I was just going to comment on the mo on, um, on Memorial Day. I, I want to pay particular um, attention to the work that our veteran service officer, Kevin Bono, did pulling that event together. First of all, um, the weather was lousy. Um, he can't control that, but um, he put a program together that was absolutely spectacular. Um, he brought in the family of uh, William Hansen, who was the petty officer that was killed on the USS Stark 30 years ago and had a presentation to his family that really just left tears in your eyes. And, 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 and it just really made um, the town look really good. The community came out strong, even in the lousy weather. 
Um, and um, we really um, are really fortunate to have Kevin working hard behind the scenes and putting these together. Um, Andy and John and myself spoke at the various cemeteries, and even those were filled up. I mean, it's not just Laurel Hill, right? So, uh, but I really want to just compliment Kevin on a job really well done. Um, the other thing I wanted to report on is that um, I, I had really the most incredible opportunity uh, last Friday to attend at, the, at Coolidge a presentation. Um, it was that, that uh, Sarah Marchant, the principal there, brought in a uh, survivor of the Holocaust, Dr. Anna Ornstein, to speak to the eighth graders um, at, um, at Coolidge. And basically for 90 minutes, um, she held those kids in rapt attention. I was really impressed by the quality of the questions that those kids asked. A lot of them couldn't believe that had happened, asked questions about how we can prevent this again. And um, you know, the fact that at age 90, Dr. Ornstein is still going around talking to kids. Um, and you can just see those kids were paying incredible attention. So um, thanks to the folks at, at Coolidge uh, who did that, who put that together. Um, I think those 7,500 kids whoever were there are gonna go out and sort of have a keen understanding about sort of what they can do um, to make this world a better place. Her, I mean, just as a takeaway for me, one of the questions that she, asked, that she was asked is, well, how do, how do we as kids prevent this? And Dr. Ornstein says, get involved in your democracy because that's what happened in Germany. People didn't get involved in their democracy and that's what happened. So um, great job by the Coolidge folks and it's just an honor to attend. One is that that presentation will be, oh, Linda Snow, Doc, Sir Beaver Road. That presentation will be on RCTV. Thank you very much to RCTV for enabling that to happen. So keep, stay tuned for that. And also I'd like to call the Human Relations Advisory Committee to order we have a quorum here. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. That's it. Just to amplify Barry's points, I'd also mm. like to thank the Public Works Group for getting the uh, grounds of the cemeteries in order. I was speaking to Father Romano from uh, St. Athanasius and, uh, I'm sorry, I'm dancing, Austin Prep. And he said, you know, I, I live in Methuen. I said, because you, you guys really have some great uh, cemeteries. I see a lot of cemeteries. You guys have some <laughs> great cemeteries. So um, I think the, deep, the public works guys did a great job getting the grounds uh, spick and span. Um, it obviously helped the, uh, the event as well. Um, I had a breakfast meeting this morning with members of the school committee, the vice chair, town manager, Barry and I, uh, Gail Wood and Sharon Angstrom, Chuck, Chuck Robinson as well, all met for about an hour to talk about uh, planning for the upcoming year in terms of uh, budgets, et cetera. So that's my report. Andy? Um, so I went to a, Emily is on for the housing authority, mm -hmm. um, and I went to that meeting. I'm sort of learning the nuts and bolts of that, um, and uh, it was sort of a nuts and bolts meeting, so I don't have much to report on that. Um, and then it, John and I went to a um, Historic District Commission meeting and Historic Society meeting oh, thank you for, for, for uh, um, some paperwork that needed to be done regarding the de development on Summer Ave and the Summer Ave yep. Historic Project District. 178, 186, yeah. Um, and, um, and I'd like to, echo the comments about Kevin's uh, great work. Yesterday it was, it was a uh, little moving uh, day. And he did a great job uh, organizing it all. Um, and also, like Barry, I went to uh, Anna Orenstein's uh, talk at, at Coolidge and um, I found it, it was the first time I'd ever heard a, a Holocaust survivor talk and, and um, uh, if you ever have the opportunity opportunity to do so, I, I, I recommend it highly. Um, my own background as a German-American, having spent time, a lot of time with relatives, aunts and uncles in Germany who were, as she talked about, the bystanders, um, sort of a bit of an embarrassing topic for me, but I, she, she did a wonderful job. And um, it, it made it less academic and more real for me. That's it. Thank you, John. In keeping with the um, public safety training theme, I had a unique opportunity today, actually, 
Um, I, we were invited, and I was able to accept an invitation to attend a, um, an active shooter training um, exercise that was going on today um, in Reading. And I have to tell you that um, George Danis was kind enough to loan us the property to the, where the library used to be. Um, kind of a perfect setting for that kind of a training exercise. Um, I parked my car and I came walking in the back through a, a long series of hallways and offices and and there were bodies everywhere. It's pretty stark. I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, wow, there were bodies everywhere. Um, and I got to the... Um, place that I was supposed to be as an observer and um, and what I was able to watch I mean you, you, you kind of have to get over the we talk about a training exercise like that but if you go observe it and you see the bodies and you hear the gunfire and you see Reading policemen come in um, working with Reading fire working with EMS working with dispatch and in a matter of minutes, take down the bad guy and put him in cuffs and then begin the process. I mean, it was kind of an overwhelming thing to understand that the, the public safety in our town takes our safety so seriously that these training exercises, I believe this was, I want to say day three or four yeah. of these exercises. Um, and today... Uh, there were three simulations. Um, not only was it um, a little bit of a stark reality to what goes on in our world today, but the realization that our public safety, um, or you know, kind of the entire infrastructure of our public safety, is working together to be sure that any incident we have, that's why it's no surprise to me we have a pipe bomb issue. and. Literally, in a matter of a couple of hours, it's dispatched because our folks are being trained. We have to be sure that we continue. We we're kind enough to have a location that was loaned to us uh, by a local business. Those kind of partnerships between business and government are really important. Funding for these things, this, these things don't happen for free, um, are also very important to maintain and continue. And they, the, I was able to kind of get an introduction to each piece of this, from the active shooter to the takedown to the, um, to the victim attention to the triage unit, and then was invited um, to a thing which I found to be just stunning. It was, they call, they call it a hot wash, and it's at the end and everybody assembles, and they, and they critique each other. They're making sure that everybody in this room is safe if something happens. And we, and Chief, I just want to say to you, thanks very much for the invitation. Greg has already left, but I appreciate the invitation from both of you. Kind of an overwhelming um, tribute to the way that our, our folks continue to train themselves, and I think that it's something that um, if that opportunity presents itself again, I would encourage you guys. It's uh, really, it's, it's quite insightful to what's going on in public safety in our town. So. When is the next one scheduled, Chief? Is it done? Is this the end? Today the end? Today the end. Yeah. 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 And, you know, there were observers from many other towns that were present. Um, the Middlesex County Sheriff were there with their communication unit. It's very interesting to watch. You know, you've got, uh, you know, a police commander in charge, you've got a fire commander in charge, they're sequestered in the communication area, and you'd think that these guys grew up together and hung out together when you watch them work together. Um, open channels um, going on, of communication, uh, apps on their phones so that they can be talking to each other very directly, um, opportunities inside that communication center to close them off from the outside world as they need to. It's, um, it's quite impressive, and I, you know, I'm glad we're doing it.
and I, I'm glad we're going to continue to do it. Thank you, John. I also want to one, and I just want to clarify, especially for the media in the room, that they weren't actual real bodies. <laughs> <laughs> they did look very realistic when I walked in. I, I yeah. admit it was shocking. Um, and, and it took a while to get over that shock, yeah. quite honestly. Um, and the other thing that I was impressed, uh, especially, which I suppose I should have known, is that many officers are trained to take command because you don't know who will be present at a scene. Right. So it is not necessarily the two chiefs that will be in charge of a scene. Um, that training goes deep into the organization, and, and that was really impressive that so many people had the ability to take over a scene like that. So again, thanks, Mark. Maybe one of the more impressive things. I mean, myself yeah. and the two chiefs had the observer vest. So yeah. I mean, sure. right. um, they were, they're, they're, they're don't shoot. Know, <laughs> yeah. Their officers were, and, and firefighters were handling it. They, yeah. And they, and it's interesting to watch them um, in the critical analysis of yes. the event. They're brutally honest. Uh, they're brutally honest with each other about what they need to do better. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you, John. Any other comments before we move on? Okay. Uh, members of the public, you're free to make a comment. We will. I expect some of you here for the 8:30 event. You were able to wait till 8:30. That's probably a more effective use of your time. Um, if you're here to talk on any other subject other than the uh, human rights discussion. You're free to make a comment now. Mr. Brown. Thank you, John. Phil Brown, uh, Dave Matt Road, member of the Cemetery Board of Trustees. And we did our annual tour of the Fort Cemetery tonight. And what made it perhaps a little bit better because Bob King is retiring as of 3 o'clock tomorrow night. And we gave him the send up tonight. And uh, in all we packed to Kevin Goldman, there was a lot of people behind the scenes that work, uh, myself included. Report that nobody's left the cemetery. Everybody's <laughs> 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 and, and, and we do have lots to see. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other public comment? All right, Bob, any comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to just make that one series of remarks. Um, while at the pipe bomb incident, I learned there was a second SWAT sticker event at the high school. Certainly an interesting place to learn about. Um, the next morning, I was in touch with the advice of three folks outside of town, Rabbi Susan Abramson. Um, she's from Temple Shalom Ameth in Burlington. And um, when I told her how I had been recommended to her, she said, that is a first. I've never been recommended from a pipe bomb scene before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to thank the rabbi um, immensely. I've probably communicated with her probably 20 times since last Thursday, email and, uh, and um, phone calls. She's been very helpful in trying to decide how to set up a community response event, what have you. Um, unhappily, uh, the rabbi has had extensive experience with this, with this matter. Um, I also had become aware of her, uh, of her name through an article that I think was a, over a year ago in the Globe about how Bedford responded to a series of incidents at their high school. And um, Susan happens to live in Bedford, so she was uh, very involved in the Bedford uh, situation. She suggested to me that I, I pick out two or three um, community religious leaders that she would like to meet with this week. Um, I picked the two that I'm most familiar with, um, Father Stephen Rock, um, because we tried to buy his uh, school once. <laughs> All is forgiven. Yes, I, I like to think so. Had a better place. And Reverend Lisa Stedman is right across the parking lot, so uh, we lock horns and talk about our uh, flock often on weekends. Um, each was very gracious, and I ran into Father Rock yesterday at the Memorial Day ceremony. Um, each was very gracious and highly interested in participating in some event. Um, what, what Rabbi Abram and Abramson said, as well as I spoke to folks at the Anti-Defamation League, is the best response a community can have to such an event is an interfaith response, uh, some kind of a community meeting led by many faiths, as many as you have and can get and not led by the town manager, so I was, of course, glad to hear that. <laughs> um, so we will have an initial meeting. Other um, religious uh, folks in town have been suggested already by those two, including uh, the longest-serving pastor of the Korean church, Reverend um, Kyung Lo Young Lu, who's here, I know. Um, so, th you know, this initial meeting, and I'll, I'll ask the rabbi if she would, you know, allow a couple more people to attend, and I'll, I'll really leave it up to her. I don't know what her 
presence will be at any future events. Honestly, I do want to leave that up to her to decide. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's her call, and we'll support her. If she wants to help uh, put together an event and participate, I'd be thrilled. Uh, I've never met her, but I know just from our exchanges, she's already invoked rabbi, town manager, um, uh, secrecy a few times. So I know she's really <laughs> a good person. And again, unhappily, she's had quite a bit of experience with these uh, events. So I will hope to meet with them this week. I've only initially contacted the chair and the uh, acting chair of HRAC to see what their role will be. I fully expect after this initial conversation that the religious leaders that are going to carry the ball forward will do so with HRAC or lead through HRAC and you know, we'll discuss that at, at the next selectman's meeting. From what I've heard, especially from the Anti-Defamation League, Given this time of year, it would be really, really helpful to have a meeting before the summer it really starts, a meeting before July 4th. So we'll try our best. Um, my thoughts are uh, Performing Arts Center at the high school is, is probably the best location. That's the biggest location. I don't know its availability in the month of June. I'll have to work on that. So the details are wide open. I don't have them. I don't want to have them. I want this, again, to be interfaith-led. And uh, the town will play whatever supporting role that they uh, that they ask us to. And, and again, I really want to thank them. I should also mention that the Reading Clergy Association, and I don't know how they meet. I suspect if the rabbi's uh, words of wisdom are true, it's mostly electronic these days. It's mostly email. Um, after the first incident, um, they are ready to stand up and, and make some statements and be heard. And they decided, um, you know, as I did, perhaps in error, it's only an isolated incident. It's a school issue. Let's leave it alone. Um, that's how I led to the rabbi, as I may have made a big mistake on the first one, I'm not going to do it on the second one. They had the same reaction when the second one happened. They said, that's it. We're in. So, you know, you will hear more from this. Um, it'll be an event that I hope is held in June, and it'll be an event that gets wide publicity. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just stay in touch. But I want to, again, thank the uh, Reading clergy for their initial participation, as well as uh, Rabbi Abramson. Bob, in your conversations with the rabbi, did did she give any indication as to the the type of event, uh, a town hall, a teaching, you know, what, how that event would be sort of <coughs> comprised, and how we get we get people there? Just well, um, any. She and the uh, ADL were quite familiar with each other, so and I don't know if I'm going to remember exactly which one said or the other, but the general construct was led by religious leaders, not led by town officials. Town officials can attend, but they should not be up on the dais. It's not you know, a town official, it's not a town meeting, if you will. A high school location is generally the best one in a community just because that's the biggest space, uh, depending on attendance. And the town and the schools should uh, you know, play whatever supportive role the clergy asks, basically. So you know, that, that discussion will happen, though. Other questions? Very good. Um, any other comments, Bob? No. Oh, that's all. Thank all you. Right, thank you. At this point, being 7.30, we'll move to the approving of the intermunicipal agreement with Wakefield for Shared Food uh, Services. Question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. There's another motion above that, Bob. Oh, want, sorry about that. that. Um, you could do it before or after uh, John and... Okay. When we do yeah, a lot of people here. We'll so we, we we do, do it later. Same amount of time, six months. Sure. Yeah. So, come on in. Okay. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. Linda? Talk to us. I'm, I'd like to ask the Human Relations Advisory Committee to reconvene in the conference room right next door, and we'll come back at 8.30. We're going to be discussing the um, incident and possible ways that we can help, as well as anything else that just went out of my brain. But okay. we'll Very be good. right next door and come back at 8.30. Can't guarantee the seats will be here, but come on back. It's all right. Um, we we stood before. It's okay with John, us. Thank you. Thank you. John. You guys want to sit here? <laughs> 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 I gave it up for you. <laughs> 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 You're up. Great. Thank you for having us here tonight. I believe in the packet. Yeah, that I can put it up if oh. you want. We are here, um, we are renewing the intermunicipal agreement we have with the town of Wakefield where we share our school nutrition mm -hmm. director. This is actually um, 
we had an initial one year, we did a three year after that, so this is we're renewing the three year. Um, this is a regionalization model we've had with them that has continued to be a great success. We work very closely with Wakefield. Um, we worked with them to renew the contract. They are meeting with their school committee and board of selectmen as well. Actually, they it was approved on the 9th by the school committee and the 22nd with the selectmen in Wakefield. Um, they're very happy with the arrangement. We've been very happy with it. Kristen Morello has done an amazing job running the program for us as well as working with Wakefield. And the duration of this agreement is? Three years. Three years. Is there an automatic extension or an optional extension that's anticipated? No, we would revisit it again at the end of three years and look to do another three year okay. with them. Questions from the board, Dan? Uh, this essentially appears to be the same uh, wording that we've had in prior contracts. It is the, the same. Are there any substantive changes? Nope, the only changes were that we increase the annual amount by a cost of living for each of the next three years, which is consistent with what we did last time. So the only changes were to the dates and the amounts. And are they, uh, uh, I know when we do the, um, the town assessor, um, we share with Wakefield. Is this a Wakefield employee that we contribute to or a Reading employee? It is a Reading employee, employee that they contribute to. I think that's so the same thing with the assessor too, right? Uh, Wakefield. Wakefield. Right. No, Wakefield. Right. Is there any reason why it's one of, you know, why these things are one or the other or it's just where the person started? Where the, skill the person started in Reading. Oh, okay. <clears throat> any other questions from the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve the three-year intermunicipal agreement with Wakefield for a shared food services director as presented. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 5-0. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. Thank you. Guys. Thanks. Thanks. Back over. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah sure. Thanks, John. Sure. Oh, you're the secret key either. Let's see. This motion you want to go through, right? Sure. Um, uh, yeah. Do you want any background discussion there? Uh, yeah, I should probably talk before the motion. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not the best one to have all the facts, but um, the past chair and the current chair have worked with our town accountant, Sharon Angstrom, who's not here tonight, um, and tried to understand why she's so busy. And she is. She's here weekends frequently. And one of the issues that happened last fall with the school department was they had turnover in, in what is now Gail's position, uh, the finance, uh, finance director in operations. And it was vacant for quite some time. And Sh Sharon stepped in and helped them through that period, especially at a difficult period because it was the end of the year of paperwork for the schools. So Sharon did a really nice job. So John, I, I've not really been involved, but John and then John um, did some background research with Sharon to try to understand just how many hours was put on that task because it's always important to understand you know, what's unique and what's just business as usual in terms of staffing for the future. Um, and it, you know, it was determined that there was a significant amount of hours that would be classified as one time. Um, so what they asked me to propose and we actually used funds that would have gone to pay in class funding but instead we're making a one or asking you to make a one-time payment to uh, Sharon Angstrom for a fraction of her time uh, if she were being paid overtime and obviously to thank her. Thank you. Any questions from the board? No? <coughs> I'll entertain a motion. Move to extend the gratitude of the selectmen to the town accountant for her assistance to the school department while they were in transition to a new director of finance and operations earlier in the fiscal year. And further move to approve a one-time payment of $2,000 to the town accountant during this fiscal year, which represents only a portion of the additional hours worked for this purpose. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? No? I'd just like to mention, I put, um, as Bob mentioned, um, this kind of came together during the time that I was chairman. And um, this isn't really new money. This is a rearrangement of of monies right. that you know were not yeah it's in our overtime choice budget. was being made not to use it elsewhere right um honestly when we when i looked at the amount of hours involved for our town accountant this is 
like a tip. I mean, I mean it's it, you know, it's a it's a sign of good faith, right. you yeah. know, recognizing From us, and it's it doesn't add to the fixed cost of the town. It's a one-time rearrangement of money, and um, it's overdue, well deserved, and. I, I would just comment on the fact that not only was there turnover in her department and actually a move towards, mm -hmm. you know, as the new position gets filled, creating some relief for her. And at the same time, she generously, I mean, the, we just heard from Gail Dowd, you know, who is from the private sector, the new uh, finance person over on the school side. Um, Sharon was worked endlessly to help yeah. in her in the transition so yeah this is really yeah. a, a token of our appreciation I agree more than anything else I just yeah, want to reiterate yeah, that. Sorry. yeah I, I mean we all know what a great job Sharon does and not only the job that she does but in the manner in which she does it just very balanced and you know very calm um, and and you know a tremendous asset to the town and I think um, not to take anything away from Sharon, I think you could make state the same case for any one of a number of town employees who've gone above and beyond, stepping in when needed, doing other, you know, filling in other roles while a department is transitioning. And, and, and again, not to take anything away from all that she's contributed, but it just really underscores the need of, um, you know, or, or just underscores the fact that we have, that we, that we really run very thinly um, the jobs don't go away just because we have fewer people doing them, um, and we have an incredibly dedicated staff. So, um, kudos to Sharon. Um, I enjoy working with her. Um, and again, this is just this is well deserved, and probably not enough. Any other comments? I, I just uh, the Reading employee manager relationship overall just seems to be so extraordinary, and it's done nothing but benefit the town. Uh, when you look at all levels of uh, when we do the new sh union negotiations, how smoothly that goes. Uh, they really do have their skin in the game on the health care costs. And this is just another example. Uh, not, again, not to diminish anything that Sharon did here, but uh, kudos to everybody. Great. If there are no other comments, uh, all those in favor of the motion? 5-0. Thank you. She'll be surprised. <laughs> is, she, uh, is she watching? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She's probably she's in her probably office. Not. <laughs> yeah, she's probably upstairs. I'll check my phone. <laughs> All right, we're Nothing seven yet. minutes behind for appointing a member to the RCTV board. Okay, move to appoint Stephen Crook as a member of the RCTV board with a term expiring. Would that be 6-30-18? It just says oh, in. Yes, yes. That's okay. 6 18 So the background story here is that the um, Board of Selectmen have two representatives to the RCTV board, um, one of whom has resigned, and... Um, Tonight's motion is to nominate Steve Crook as the replacement for that vacancy. Any discussions okay. by the oh, you board? You need a second first. Oh, sorry, second. second. We have a second. Any other discussions <coughs> by the board? I think everyone knows Steve. He's usually behind a camera. That's right. Steve. Waving. <laughs> yeah. Or in the back of the room. He can't. <laughs> um, you had a month off from Board of Assessors. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> time, time to go back. back. I, I, I take it, Steve, that you are doing this willingly. You're not yes. being <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought I was up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no one retires. <laughs> you just get another job. All right. If there's no other commentary, all those in favor? Five zero. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, thanks, right. Steve. Thanks, Steve. All right. Yeah. Next, we have a report by RCTV. That's scheduled at 740. So we have two minutes. Charge ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Two yeah. yeah. minutes. Okay. Kathy? Sure. Come on up. So I'm Kathy Crook, uh, current chair of the board for RCTV. Um, and we come periodically uh, just to kind of let you know what, you, what we've done. I've handed out um, the annual report, which is also available at, on our website. And we had a little, five, we have a little five minute review um, of the year which is also available on our website. So it just kind of captures how busy we've been, what, um, 
we've you know covered two elections and multiple town events. Um, very very busy year. Uh, we have the a new um, facility within the library, the community room in the library, so that we've been using that for meetings and other library events. Have a very good relationship with the librarian who says, oh, we're doing this thing on free speech, come down and tape it, you know, and we do and create program for RCTV. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And I have two member, two of the board members who are going to be handing out the focus group flyers. Um, our newly elected board member, <laughs> and then um, <laughs> put him to work right away, you know, and um, Katie Robertson. And I really want to encourage everyone to RSVP. Our consultant is looking. Um, we get these periodic updates. We need more people. We need more people. So that includes the Board of Selectmen members. Please RSVP to which focus group you can attend. Um, again, this is the information garnered there is used in the negotiations. It is completely town. You don't have to be an RCTV member. You don't even have to say anything nice about us, though we appreciate when you do. Um, but it really is all about the community needs for the cable negotiations that will be starting um, in a few months. So. So um, one of the things that we were we wanted to update everyone on is RCTV will be returning to um, the high school uh, in the fall for um, TV production classes. Oh, great. Um, That's awesome. We are um, in negotiations with the school department now on the space and the terms of how that's going to work. Um, so um, I know we're on the schedule to do this sort of presentation of the school committee in July. So hopefully by then we'll be able to show some uh, plans of what the space is going to be, where it's going to be, and what the description of the courses are, are uh, will be that we'll be offering for. And you'll, you'll be teaching those. Well, our, yeah, yeah, RCT we're is, we're, we're, will be hiring someone to teach um, in the in the school district. It will be um, uh, the way we we're, we're structuring internally will be a part time position at the high school, and then the other part of the position will be doing things at RCTV, hosting programs like community conversations. So sort of similar to um, you know what, what Kevin Vent was doing on, on a part-time basis but um, they're the, the person that we actually have in mind is a qualified teacher and we're working with That's the great. superintendent and the principal on on um, you know what what that course is going to look like um, so it's, it's actually it's very exciting and we'll be still continuing our after-school program uh, at the high school and middle school levels and one of the interesting things that was mentioned about the Holocaust taping, the taping of the speech was that feels like we did. And it was done by one of the students, you know, who yeah, and in, in, yeah. in turn who's been at RCTV, who, who will be the president of the after school program in the fall. Um, he just, you know, it it just it happens seamlessly so we've got great kids involved and really do look forward to having <coughs> more kids involved um, at a younger age as well so they're involved through the entire time um, and maybe get some of their parents involved too because you know we're all about Anyone having everybody <laughs> um, but I think that's if there are any questions I mean we've been Yes, John? I'm no, sorry, I didn't mean to mean to interrupt. No, 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 I was just muttering. Uh, two thoughts. One is I think RCTV is one of the gems that we have in town. We ought to get a, find a way to get as much uh, utility out of that resource that we can. I think involving yourself at the school, plenty of folks have communications uh, desires in their future, whether it be broadcast or back office or production or what have you. Mm -hmm. And this is another opportunity to get another slice of the student body involved in an aspect where they might love to uh, invest the time and energy, even if it's uh, on an uncompensated basis. Um, so do you think that, has the space been identified yet and it's just going through the motions or is that still open? Yeah, we're, we're working with the facilities department, the superintendent and the principal on finalizing the location. Okay. I, it's, it's pretty definite where it's going to be. Right. It's just a matter of, of how that's going to be laid out and, and okay. integrated into the, to the, the school schedule. 
your annual report shows a, uh, a balance sheet and uh, a statement of cash flows, but I don't see an income and expense statement. Uh, we have an abbreviated financials in our annual report, but the full financial documents um, were given to the town, and they're also on our website. Okay. It's, it's like 20 pages. We don't That's include fine. it all in the... Could you just send a link to maybe Bob and he'll just Sure. Yep. I be believe Bob should... I think actually we send it to Sharon, so... That's fine. That's um, fine. As long as the board gets it. That's yeah. one of the more mm -hmm. interesting financial documents is where's the money coming from and where's it going to, so... 95% of our funding comes from the cable providers, Comcast and Verizon. The rest is through fundraising, membership dues, um, and donations. Do you know what your cash balance was at the end of 16? I do, I do not. Okay. Um, All right. I, I, I will say that the board is committed to spending a significant amount of that funding that we have in reserve for the build-out of the high school studio space, uh, not only just the... Um, uh, the actual like space, we have to change the specs of the room to, to sure. be for a TV studio, sure. but Sorry. then just all the video equipment, cameras, and wiring, and all that lighting that needs that will be uh, in that space. But then also the you know the teacher and uh, you know that. So well, we're, we're we're working with the school department on that, and hopefully we'll be able to announce something good very soon. The other comment for me is I'd like to see if RCTV could make an effort to get all of the elected boards on uh, video in any of the venues they commonly meet. And so, for example, a burger room has no means to record that I know of. Maybe that's not possible technically and you need to do it with remote equipment. Um, we, we've done recordings in the yeah. burger room. It's not um, not wired like this room with the, with the cameras and the, and the ceiling. Yeah, I'm not talking about people in the room, but actually make it so it is like this. so that you It's have possible. Um, it's possible. I. Um, and, and then likewise, occasionally in the police station uh, community room, I could see that be a need to do that as well. Police station community room, senior center is actually the, nest, the next uh, room on our list okay, um, that we would like to install cameras because that gives us a double purpose of recording nighttime government, but then it being available for programs during the day for, 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 for events at the senior center. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the other is there's a, there's a number of committees that aren't yet uh, being recorded. And some of them are liaisons and, ad, and committees that roll up under us. And I'd love to make sure that they're covered as regularly as we are. Um, you guys, like, really put us to the test last year <laughs> with all of your, uh, you know, your, all of the meetings. We, we covered more meetings last year, I think, than we have in the last three years combined. Yeah, just from my side, it was a little tiring I know. to be here, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, that we believe. We, um, and I know, I, you know, because I watch your meetings, that there was a discussion of, you guys were talking about your liaison reports yep, and who yep. goes to which meeting and you'd like the RCTV to cover more and there was a comment made about, you know, in the next negotiation of our, our RCTV's contract, you know, we need to ask RCTV to cover more stuff. Don't wait for our contract. You know, we've we've been asked by the town manager before to cover various other committees or other department heads. Yep. Like, you know, we, you know, the, the list that RCTV covers doesn't include the permanent building committee, but we've recorded those historical commission meetings when when requested sometimes hearings if, if uh, you know the clerk wants a, um, a recording for uh, for minutes that you know we're, we're happy to do that just as long as we have notice yeah my preference would be that you do it by default not by notice so any, yeah. any meeting in this room or any meeting in the police station or the conference room next door the calendar's out a month in advance mm -hmm. you know it's there plan to cover it I mean the whole reason that this exists is to help the, inform the community who can attend Mm -hmm. That's denied if the video is not taken. So, but I think you guys are doing a great job. Now that they're wired, that is is possible. It's just finding now the people to. So can you do it from home yet, Phil? That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, that's that's interesting. Yes, you can, but then there's a there's an issue. We would have to talk with you know the the town IT and town staff nice. about you know the issue of monitoring rooms when there isn't. Personally, me, I like someone in the room. Uh, you know, so when you guys get to an executive session, the mics get turned off. If it's somewhere else, you know, I don't ever want to get in trouble of right. executive sessions getting out on the air. Or you need to be on the air. <coughs> well, yeah, we can certainly put we can put a monitor in here if you would like that. So Absolutely, that, would like to know when we're broadcasting. You know, we can put it back there so you guys can see when we when you're in close right. up. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> I really need a shave. No? Yeah. Yeah. That's my um, yeah. Phil or Kathy, how many how many members do you have right now, and can you talk about a, a trend in terms of have you, have you gotten has membership uh, stayed the same, increased, declined over let's say the last two three years? Our membership fluctuates between two fifty and three fifty, and it's been that way for the last ten years. 
um, as we get new people, people tend to be members for about five years. But that's paid dues members that use the equipment. Um, we do have um, some people who join just to support, but there's not a lot of that using that PBS um, format of you know becoming a member to support. We don't have a lot of that. It would be great if people did. Um, to, uh, um, to, John, to John's point about sort of just increasing the um, your presence at, at community meetings, I would assume that once you're up and running at the high school and teaching the production course to students, that that could be part of the curriculum. Is oh, that now, now you have body? I mean, <clears throat> I imagine that the reason why you don't do as many is that you just don't have the box <laughs> every time. That's a lot. Yes. Right. So this will be a way to kind of create <clears throat> trained bodies. Well, and that, you know, I having gone to running schools and you know, I started doing this when I was in high school. Students schedules have changed a lot since I've been in high school. So, you know, I, I actually used to sit in the back of this room before we had, you know, cameras in the ceiling and would record selectmen's meetings sometimes till very late. You know, you guys end early, actually, from when I was in high school and covered your <laughs> okay. meetings. You well, we're we're going to see. Yeah. We can okay. get <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I'll pick on the school committee. They were actually, they used to, they used to go later. So I hated during, you know, finals to cover school committee meetings. We'd go to like midnight, and that was awful. So, Good. any other comments? I'd like to also speak out on behalf of the superintendent and myself. I know we met with the board a couple of years ago. And the number one, one thing was uh, access to kids, access to students. I agree with Barry's point that I think you'll find a lot of very interested labor, if you will. I know that's your, mm -hmm. your bandwidth problem, is uh, folks to take meetings to other or broadcast them. I think your presence in the high school is phenomenal. It's what John has wanted for years. And I understand all the complications with their schedule being very difficult. The scheduled classes is going to be very challenging for you. Mm -hmm. um, but I know on behalf of John, I would very much like to thank him for that. That was the number one goal. That's good. I, I think, you know, just to comment on that, uh, part of the issue is that in the past, one of the four or five uh, RCTV employees was going to the high school and teaching a class for one period, two periods a day. And um, that's just the way the schedule changes. It was it was tough on, you know, us to do that. So. Our commitment to actually hire someone that will be part of the school, um, you know, building and be there and on you know a good chunk of the day, um, you know, offering more courses I think is the best way to go so that we'll be able to provide more courses to students and then get more content and bodies and you know sports coverage and everything else that that comes with having an active studio at, at uh, high school. Not only two cents a week. I think you've got a hidden gem in the Reading Sports Program. There's so many kids that don't necessarily play a sport, but they enjoy it or they want to be part of mm -hmm. it in some way. And whether you get a couple kids with a camera doing baseball games or doing basketball games, it'll be tough at first. Mm -hmm. They'll learn, but it's just like you know bees to honey. They'll take to yeah. it and take mm -hmm. off. We have a small, dedicated group of kids right now who are doing sports. They, you know, they were really trying to step it up this year and. Do fall winter sports and baseball is a hard sport it to is. cover. You need like five cameras. It's, it's, the, it's the hardest, especially when you travel. You have no yeah, yeah. Uh, There's just even home games and then dealing with you weather. Need three and, cameras to do it. You know, we don't have a truck, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, if we had a truck, it's it's as well. if we had a truck, numbers that are just don't put the truck in the field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can borrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the the fact of the matter is, is that for for the fall that we were covering one one game of every sport. The only one we didn't get to was golf. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. We tried to do. But we were doing football every Friday night every, all for the home games. And when they went to the Super Bowl, the dedicated crew went to Gillette, went into the press box, oh, was on the field and just, you know, and Ate we had we had several adults who said I want to do. Why didn't you ask me? I said, you got to do the work before. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You get the perks later. All right. But any other questions? Just a, uh, John, yes, just a, a brief couple of comments. First of all, I didn't know there was a close up camera. <laughs> you should watch I appreciate yourself. It in the, yeah, I know. And um, the, thank you for the packet, although it makes me feel rather old. Mm -hmm. and we can um, but to comment on your, you know, at the risk of having my blood pressure go through the roof again, you, I th think you guys did a great job of covering the uh, April election and, the, and the, the events running up to that. Um, 
think that's a great uh, service to our local democracy. You are everywhere. I mean, even, even John and I are standing out in the freezing rain holding our signs <laughs> on election day. One of your uh, folks showed up and, and, and filmed us holding our signs. You know, really uh, showed a lot of dedication. Well, we did blizzard. We did a day of blizzard coverage. So we had people out here, you know, measuring snow, the snowfall, and you know, Katie was, um, you know, we made French toast. Made to French toast. We're trying to do, you know, do different stuff. Yeah. The one thing that I would like to say though is that it would be nice to have more people watching RCTV on the channel. And the caveat to that is we don't we film everything in HD. And we don't have yeah, HD, um, right, an right, HD right. channel. And when you we you ask Verizon, you ask Comcast, they say it's not in your contract. Hint, hint, hint. June seventh, eighth, guys. Yeah, we'll fix that. Right. So you, anyway. You also have a great YouTube website. Yeah, that is. Which HD. is in HD. Yes. Which is in HD. Oh. It is in it's, HD. It's fantastic. But our funding comes from Comcast and Verizon. Comcast and Verizon. So more people watch it on YouTube. It's a, it's great. More people see it, but may not be so great because they're not subscribing to the cable. Yeah. Yes. Is, that's the revenue stream. Yeah. That's the it's revenue a, stream. It's an internal battle I'm having right now with the board. I don't, I don't think I'm winning, <laughs> but you know, we want to provide information and put all the videos out on YouTube, but where our funding comes from the cable company. And so if people cut yeah. the cord and go with you know Netflix and HBO Go and all that other stuff and like and say I can just watch RCTV on, on YouTube, YouTube where our funding goes away and so that may not necessarily be a bad thing but we'll have to change our our business model and how we generate funds well right. it, it won't be a good thing if you we lose that funding no that won't no. be a good thing at all and frankly I don't think that people are going to cut the cut the cable cord tied to whether or not they're getting you guys, you know, no. streaming. It's kind of a bigger um, issue. However, I will tell you, I think you'd be, based on the feedback I get, I think you'd be sure. We have no way of measuring how many people are watching this right now. Comcast and Verizon will not um, release. They say it's proprietary. I promise you there are a lot of people watching. Um, a lot of them who usually watch might be in here tonight. I think. <laughs> but um, I think you'd be, I wish we knew. Right. Um, but the feedback that I have received personally, and I'm sure you guys have received similar feedback, there's a lot of people watching this broadcast. Mm -hmm. We used to call it the Atlantic test when our TV hosts would go grocery shopping in Atlantic. They would, you know, it would take them forever to, because, you know, signing autographs as they were. You know, doing <laughs> and I'm sure you guys, you guys are on TV, you know. You yeah, we're not signing on. autographs. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, 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 no. I charge. If you'd like a cooking <laughs> show, maybe that, you know, would be bad. Or That's right. Is there any way in the next contract negotiation to be able to, to get um, viewer statistics? That or is that you just have to ask them. Uh, no, but I mean, when I, you, when you I don't know of any in the country, any access station that has access to those numbers. Everything's negotiable. I think I think you just build it. Hey, yeah. you ask, and we'd then like, it's one know. of the things you well, that's do why a lot Dan, of asks. That's why Dan and I you do a lot of asks. Yeah. Ask They'd probably hate to see a third cable company come into town. Yes. <laughs> well, and I, I don't understand why they won't partner with us because, you know, we are a unique um, vehicle that they, you know, you have to get Comcast or Verizon to get us. If you get Dish, you don't get us. If you got the core, you don't get us. So I don't, I don't, I never understood why they didn't, you know, they don't want to work with us. But we're, we come out of their bottom line, so they don't want to support we'll, us. Yeah, we'll take care of them the next go. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Everything's don't negotiable. Don't worry about that. <laughs> All right. Anything else in the world? Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good Thank evening. You. Awesome. Great right back on time at 8 o'clock. There we go. Uh, next, we have the Town Forest Committee. Folks who would like to come on up. Are you speaking, Tom? <laughs> Happy trails. Um, Tom and I, we can both speak. Just like to tell the truth. Remember that you stand up at the end? Right. I, don't know. I just came to listen. Okay. All right. Here we go. Front and center. Come on up. Sure. Oh, the other, this is called Kim. Thank <laughs> you. 
least you get a chair. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Good evening. Good, Good evening. Here for trails. Thank you, sir. Happy trails. Yeah. Ma'am. But I'm Rick Wetzler. I'm the Town Forest Chair and Town Forest Committee Chair. And it's my privilege to tell you what we're up to. Um, it's an amazing uh, jewel in Reading's crown, we'd like to think, given the multiple use. We have scouts galore there having their first camping experiences. We have uh, recreationists who are on runs, fitness runs. We have general bird watchers. We have wildlife enthusiasts. We have students who are doing projects. We have birders who are building bird and bat houses that uh, are already standing the test of time. <clears throat> and it's an amazing resource, both in terms of its recreational value, but also its um, by its mere existence, knowing that there's fairly wild land within easy reach. And this is a disappearing resource in many ways. In fact, we're, we're seeing it frittered around, frittered uh, down a bit here. Um, there's a recent picture of a dead coyote. The fact that we have a coyote den there is a sort of testament to the inherent wildness of it, if you will. But the fact that somebody's dog did it in is a bit of a concern. Uh, dog walking is a popular component of what goes on, and we're seeing our dog walkers in some ways as the eyes of the forest. If there's anything a muck, nine times out of ten, it's a dog walker who tells us, here's what we saw. Um, we, uh, we do have some professional dog walkers, and so we've met with them, and we have a few dog walkers, probably from outside of Reading, who are less cognizant of the rules that we've worked out, and so it is a problem to see, especially in the winter, the accumulation of dog droppings and so we've got plans to deal with that. We've also been meeting with people who have concerns about dogs having chased them or in a few cases bitten them. So we're in discussions now. One proposal is to have um, off, let's see, on leash days and also dog, uh, no dog trails in certain sectors. We're entertaining a variety of approaches with that. One other concern is the health of the town forest. Uh, we see in our 300 acres, which is not very large, some of the impacts that you're seeing in forests throughout New England. There's red pine scale that's starting to do in the older trees. Uh, there is the invasion of intrusives like Japanese knotwood that is interfering with some of the regeneration, some of the seeding. So there are management challenges ahead. And if we don't want to be stuck with fire concerns as dead wood accumulates, we need to do some forest health restoration. So we're in consultation with one of the best consulting foresters around, Philip Benjamin, and he's gonna help us in terms of come up, coming up with prescriptive thinning arrangements that will allow the healthy young trees to be released and to take out some of the diseased um, elder timber, if you wanna think of it that way, or older trees. That's one of the challenges ahead, and there's some opportunities too. I think we can go a lot further to educate people to the merits of this town forest. We have one proposal, one plan partly underway, which is a, basically um, an interpretive trail that you will be able to walk on and using your phone, click on some of the icons, the QR codes along the way, and find out what's going on, what species are occurring, what to look for, what's the history, what's the geography and geology underlying this, and ideally there will be some walkthroughs that we'll host so that if you're a shut-in, let's say, in the Daniels house, you may be able to take a virtual walk in the town forest. And again, this is in keeping with our mission, multiple use for all citizens in Reading. And I think we're doing a pretty good job, but it's, it's really for others to decide. And it's never uh, smooth sailing. There's always uh, a faction that wants more consideration or a different use of the forest. And I think our guidelines, which the selectmen have approved, have been useful to create policy and to say, well, that's not an appropriate use, but this one is, so we're able to manage this within our, our guidelines. That's my too bit off the cuff statement. <laughs> Your uh, policy statements, hi Rick, I'm John Arena. Your yes, policy I'm statements haven't uh, been altered or amended in recent years, right? They've been pretty constant. You have like seven or 12, some small number of uh, use rules, is that correct? Small, small number of your, your use policy rules, as I recall, it fits on nicely on one page or maybe a page and a half. Page and a half, yes. Yeah, and it's general and then specific to groups. Right, right. And we revisit this routinely and we keep coming back to it 
um, as it is. It's so instructive, yeah. So far, uh, it's withstood the test of a few years. Right. And then, um, Bob, on the matter of clearing and thinning, the, I assume the Town Forest Revolving Fund works as well for clearing timber as it is for harvesting it. Uh, it does, however, there was a zero balance. Yeah, yeah. We funded it at town meeting, didn't we? Uh, it's, no, it's got zero, and we, uh, we authorized it. Town meeting authorized it. Revolving. That's a discussion we can easily have if you're an in initial source of funding, for instance, uh, we'll do this chat. That would be helpful. The town meeting, the town forest has a revolving fund, which I guess we need to go fund, but the, appro the yeah. approval to do so is already in place. Yes. And that's it was 10K? for the, if you will, profits from the sale of timber. Right. Could be firewood too. Be too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anytime you folks are stuck, Jeff, Jeff knows to just ask. Is it 10K or 25K? I can't remember. I don't remember the annual number. It was up to 25K should that uh, appropriation be made. Um, we have a $1,000 a year operating fund. Yeah. And so by being very parsimonious, we've got two years put together this year as it runs out and next year as it comes in, which will retain the consulting forester. The issue is. Is the value of timber removed for forest health purposes going to uh, pay for the, cons the, the consulting forester and the actual skidding out of, of logs and cleanup? And uh, it's likely to be a break-even proposition. This is not going to basically make money for the town, but it could well, be a break-even. Yeah, that's not. I mean, that's not bad. It's better than having to come to the town to ha spend yeah, the money. Yeah, it can cover its expenses. It's that's, the, that right. would be a big so tax. Yeah. we could break even and. Basically, the whole the whole point of it is to make the forest as healthy as we can, and if you could support that even at a break even, that's a win in my mind. This is what we're hoping. The, the market varies for timber. Bill, um, one suggestion they might look into is the National Guard. Uh, they had two engineering outfits down in Camp Curtis, and they were very helpful in building or Woodland Cemetery. At that time, they thought they would be could be interested in helping clean out the town forest. Hmm. So, and all we had to pay for. Helpful anyway, this other pile, this other uh, revolving fund is available in addition to your uh, operating savings. That's uh, great. That's really timely too. Yeah. John? Yeah, I, I noticed you had another big Eagle Scout project that went on this past weekend, actually. Yes. Um, very nice. I mean, there's a lot of those going on, I think. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this. Uh, the uh, heritage of the Scouts in our town forest, having been among the original planters, and then basically people learning to take care of it through the scouts is extraordinary. If you go back to the historical records, it's been a long and very gratifying partnership. And when you walk on the trails, you'll often find some of the um, boardwalks and bridges are consulted by, are built by scouts, some of the benches, some of the bird feeders. Uh, it's an amazing bunch. And to see these kids come before us, they're sometimes quaking with nervousness. <laughs> and then we're not really a particularly <laughs> daunting bunch, you know, <laughs> Tom Gardner, and Nancy and others, but but they come really nervous and then they present well thought out plans and circulate photocopies of what they made and, and then the you know we ask questions and they're very nervous about that but they rise to the occasion and then it's done and the, the sigh of relief that they give is just <laughs> palpable, it's just amazing. Just genuine kids. That's good. Any other questions from the board? Oh. Any questions from uh, those in attendance? Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. The thanks goes to the town committee members. Really, we've got a good bunch. Thank you. Let's see. Where's my screen? Next, we have the trails. Uh, sorry. Yep. Yeah, the trails committee. Excuse me. Exercise program. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I'm Jean Jacobs, and I'm a member of the Reading Trails Committee. And uh, there are several of us here tonight Tom Gardner, Will Finch, uh, and Kim Honitschlager is the town representative on the committee. So we have five regular members and one associate member, and Kim, who uh, is the GIS town representative and helps us with our maps and the town website and such. 
and we're basically people who enjoy the outdoors, love to hike, and uh, some of us kayak, bike, all that kind of stuff, and um, we like to have a place where we can all do that, but also help others in the town enjoy the outdoors as well. So we like to keep it clean and green. So our mission is basically to provide trails to maintain them um, for general town purpose use and uh, where possible have well connected trails. You know, so you can go from one trail system to another. Um, so in terms of maintaining existing trails, we clean, prune, um, remove down trees, uh, we repair or replace bridges, boardwalks, kiosks, um, and we have some trail adopters that help us do this. So it's not just the five of us that do all this work. We have volunteers that help us. Uh, we also create new trails. So there are a couple of areas where there are no trails that exist and are available for trail use if possible. And in those areas, we would clear um, and blaze the trails and, if necessary, build boardwalks or bridges um, if there are wet or water-filled areas. Uh, we tend to have several trail walks that we lead. Uh, we just did this last weekend with the Birds Before Breakfast and some of the other trail walks that were part of the Walk Reading Weekend. Uh, we do a walk in the winter that we host with the Walkable Reading Group. And um, we often do a walk in the fall for a fall foliage. Um, the Scouts will come to us with projects for trails and we'll go over their projects with them, um, make suggestions for how to engineer specific, you know, bridge parts or whatever, and then help them by telling them, you know, who, what other committees they need to go to, if it's in the town forest or if they need to talk to conservation. And so we'll work with the scouts on that. And we also work with other groups around town to encourage use of the outdoor space. So walkable reading, rolled, groups like that. We've worked with um, Girl Scouts on some of their uh, walking projects as well. How do we do it? We need volunteers. Uh, volunteers uh, really help us. There's a regular group that tend to help us on our projects, but we can always use more help, so love to have you on any projects that we do. Um, where do we get the stuff that we use? We um, have a store of materials at, that we keep in the garage at the Matera cabin and we use money from the town that we get from you guys so a thousand dollars annually which we stretch to the absolute <laughs> limit. I'm sure you do. <laughs> and um, we've also acquired over the years since the um, committee was uh, started about thirty eight thousand dollar in grant money so that has helped us a lot as well and donations there have been some donations from like a scout project where they raised a certain amount of money and had some left over. It was a trail project. They have donated it to us at, in those situations. Um, in terms of how do we let people know what's going on, the town website, Kim does a good job of keeping the trail information up to date on the town website where there's trail maps and information about upcoming events. We also have a Facebook page, so the Reading Trails Committee is our Facebook page, so if uh, you are on Facebook and want to find out what we're doing, you can like our page. Uh, we also will publish articles in the Your Community Connection, on Patch when we have upcoming events, in the Chronicle, um, things like that. And we also participate in town events, so we participated at the Earth Day event, we're going to have a table at the upcoming Friends and Family Day, so we try to get out there and get the word out about what we do and what's available for trails. So just a couple of the projects that we've done recently. On the left is the um, Higgins Bridge. It's the bridge in the property that's right near the Birch Meadow complex. It connects Rice Road over to Birch Meadow, and it gets used a lot by kids going to school and for 
sports and other extracurricular activities. And the left-hand side is what the bridge looked like last fall. Boards were breaking. It was in quite disrepair. And we had tried a couple of times to do patchwork and realized that that was not going to last long. So in one weekend, we completely took out the old bridge, and the next weekend completely built a new bridge, which you can see there on the right. And that's a stream or some sort of wet area that it goes through? Yeah, it's, um, it's <coughs> intermittent, so it's not always a stream, um, but it gets rather muddy. And while we were doing the project, there were a number of kids that went back and forth, so it gets a lot of use. We actually got helped by a, a Girl Scout brownie troop. Right. So they, they helped. They carried a, bo a decking board a piece in, and then they came back <laughs> it was cute. Done, and ran up and down to see how it worked. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was a lot everything. of fun. Yeah, <laughs> this is in the Kirchian Woods area, and this was something that made us all very upset um, to go in. This is the gas pipeline. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that goes between Main Street and over towards like Pasture Road area. Just and past where Pearl Street comes into Main with the little dodge in, dodge out. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we had known that there was trash in there and beer cans in particular, and I think there were on the order of about 300 beer cans that we picked up. Wow. Yeah, it, it's very disheartening. I live right near there, and I go in there often, and we'll go in with a garbage bag and clear up beer cans. Well, that's one way to find it. <laughs> Unfortunately, they squish a lot of the beer cans, and you can't get your nickel back for those. Um, last summer, we built this <coughs> bog bridge uh, in the Bear Meadow Trails. It's an area that, um, after one of the winters that we had a lot of snow, there was a lot of standing water there. So we had a number of volunteers, including a scout and his dad, come out and help us. and. This picture was taken right before the bridge was finished and it was just starting to rain. So we were <laughs> trying to work really fast to get in and out of there to, not so we wouldn't get drenched. And this is um, one of the trees that we removed in, the, in Bear Meadow Trails. It was a very big tree and Ed Crowley and I, who's not here tonight, went out there with the chainsaw and cut it into a bunch of different pieces and were able to roll the <coughs> tree pieces out. And um, just a few pictures from other projects, and we've got a number of things that uh, we would like to do, and do you guys have any questions or? Yeah, right. um, thank you so Welcome. much for, I mean, I, I am a frequent walker uh, in the town forest, and I utilize those trails and notice a lot of the improvements that have been done. And I know it's a labor of love, uh, obviously, to do that. and and and, and Fifteen minutes ago, we heard from the, uh, the town forest group, similarly um, constructive. Have you, I'm assuming you work together, and has, been ever, has there ever been any thought to sort of, because this, the resources are so thin, to maybe just combine your efforts and be one group that does the forest, that does the trails, or, 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 or do you do things that are sort of different, that require a separate group? I would think that you get more done well, one larger group, or, or am I going down the wrong trail? Uh, Tom may be the yeah. Tom may be the best Mr. person Gardner. to talk about that since he's on both. Oh, okay. So <laughs> yes. and you'd have less meetings to go to. There are hundred eighty degrees difference between the two committees. I really don't see where they join together. Tom Forest just does the town forest trails. Does the whole town. Seems like we had this discussion a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, we did. And, 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 <laughs> and you it, probably got didn't, the same response. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, I, and it made sense when it was explained that way. You know. Dan, yeah, uh, what percent of your reconstruction projects do you get help from Eagle Scouts and the uh, Gold Project, uh, you know, Girl Scouts? Is, is it a high percent or is it low? Because it seems to me in the past they did more of these kinds of projects, and I'm just wondering if there's a way to better publicize your needs to those groups. Yeah, and we have tried to do that by putting on the Facebook page, you know, here are projects that okay. we think a scout could take on. Um, and I think in some cases they cannot do, like, repair projects. So if it's a, right, they have to do a complete replacement. So we would, we would have loved for a scout to do the replacement of the Higgins Bridge, but the timing wasn't right for that They've to work They've got to be ready out. at the time you're ready. Yeah. Right. One thing that would be 
probably helpful in that regard, however, is um, just a regular communication. There, there are two major Boy Scout troops in town, mm -hmm. um, and just being in touch with their with their committee, you know, their committee chair, because it doesn't have to be an Eagle Scout project. So, in other words, That's a troop true. could decide to adopt a repair project, mm -hmm. which you know doesn't have the same kind of demands and criteria that you know a person doing a you know a boy doing an Eagle Scout project. Mm -hmm. So, just kind of keeping that line of communication for the kind of the public-private partnership thing that we always talk about. You might be surprised um, how much extra help you would get, extra donations, extra funding, all of those things. Yeah, might not be a bad idea yeah. to see Just if a, can go uh, to the Kind of a quarterly, meeting. you know, mm -hmm. you don't even have to go. I mean, you could just let them know on a regular basis. You guys meet once a month as new things come up. Shoot an email out to their committee chair. I'm sure they'll be happy to provide you with that contact Okay. And if not, let me know and I'll get it for you. Okay. So. Would you guys describe yourself as resource limited? That is, what limits your ability to do these is either people and money or? Both. <laughs> so more people help solve one one bottleneck and more funding helps solve another. Right. Yeah. And how old can, can a young person be and still add value? You know, at some point they're not effective, I get it. But what, what have you found? I mean, we've had kids as young as, what, eight? Yeah. Well, the brownies were carrying planks, right? Yeah, right. There you go. There you go. In terms of, okay, all right, that answers that question. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank Happy trip. Thanks. I have one comment. Um, I will. Another hopeful young little thing also on the trails to me. Uh, there's a, hopefully, a trails conference coming up. And in the past, several members have gone to these conferences where they discuss techniques on how to build boardwalks and how to place them, and, and um, we have volunteered <coughs> to the, um, the state, the DCR, to, to do a presentation at their next trails um, conference. And so hopefully that will come together um, PowerPoint. And, and many of us at CAN are going to go so we can share all our <coughs> knowledge of you know, what we've learned over the last six, seven years and pass it on to people from around the state. You guys absorb that funding on your own, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I think to actually go there, it's maybe a forty-dollar fee, and I don't. They probably won't even waive it for us. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just I ask that because it's to point out that volunteers do more than just volunteer. You know, I mean, I, and I know that. I, I know that you do more than that, um, and I think it's important that we thank you for that. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, why don't we take a five-minute bio break? Uh, sure. So we stand and recess for five minutes.
with this number of people, it can get stuffy in here, so we're opening the doors. If that doesn't work, please stop breathing. So. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Okay, let me, um, let me explain what we're going to do over the next, hopefully, 60 to 90 minutes. Um, I want to briefly, very briefly, bring primarily folks on television up to speed and, and perhaps those here as well uh, as to w how we got here. Um, at that point, I want to engage the board in a body of work that uh, Selectman Berman and I have developed and which was distributed to you, which appears on page 19 in tonight's packet. Uh, I'm going to entertain comments. Uh, I'm going to discourage amendments, but I understand um, at least one is proposed. Would be two. Um, and uh, we'll consider those as we do all amendments. Um, we'll take a vote on it, and then we'll um, open it up for public comment as it relates to the uh, discussion we just completed and then the amendment itself. So let me give those in attendance um, a quick background. This board was presented with a uh, written resolution by citizens by over 200 signatories, the number is 230, 240-ish, um, in one public meeting like this, and then in two working sessions, uh, including Mr. Berman and myself, who met with two to three members of the uh, petitioner group, uh, a new version was produced. We'll call that version two. Uh, since that, meet, that last meeting, which I think was on um, March 2nd, March 12th, uh, the board has since been given a third electronic version, which we received May 9th, it, although it's dated May 2. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Mr. Berman and I have worked, um, taken that, taken those initial versions. Uh, and by the way, on the website, uh, I think Bob's navigating yeah, there, uh, include the documents themselves, the minutes from those meetings, as well as an audio recording I took. We weren't sophisticated <coughs> enough to do video, but um, there's a fairly uh, intelligible audio package if you have absolutely nothing else to do. Um, and I think it was very useful. They, they're cordial. Uh, I think lots of respect between the parties. And I think genuine understanding was, uh, was evident in those meetings. Um, Mr. Berman and I independently uh, took the most recent version that we had and used that as a form of idea generation. I think there's good in any document. And uh, I diagrammed the, the document, broke it up by sections, historical background, relevant background. And I developed a successor document. Um, Barry contributed his components. It came back to me. I made a few changes. It went back to him at some point. Um, although it wasn't fully baked, um, it was given to our town manager to provide his insight. There were further comments, and town manager, the town council has also reviewed this version. So, Bob, if you could bring that up. I only have it in paper version on the screen. I think it was distributed earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, my intention is that this document uh, become part of our existing policy document in the form of a preamble. That is, it prefaces all of the existing policy statements. Um, I'll warn you in advance, my, my writing style tends to be terse and simple. I, I think sometimes um, more words is worse. So this ends up being more of a tossed salad than really a smooth written document, but I think it, it reads. And um, I'm going to read it here just so for those on television who can't, um, don't necessarily have a copy. <coughs> Reading, Massachusetts, a community of excellence. Preamble. In 1624, Redding's first settlers arrived from distant lands after fleeing religious persecution and the lack of economic opportunity. Buoyed by hope, they risked their lives on long, dangerous journeys in search of freedom. These earliest immigrants brought with them a sense of vitality, a strong commitment to hard work, and a committed respect for unfamiliar cultures, faith traditions, and viewpoints. We continue to this day to welcome new neighbors from both nearby communities and distant lands, we ask them to continue the, the tradition begun by the, the earliest settlers and to contribute their talents, skills, and energies to Reading's future while enjoying the freedom to pursue their own version of the American dream. Reading is a community that believes in equal opportunity, equal protection of the law, and religious freedom. Reading citizens proudly answered the call to fight in wars to end tyranny and to establish the republic, to end slavery, and to destroy fascism. Today's Reading sons and daughters serve in our nation's battle against present-day terrorism and in support of freedom. 
As the town's elected executive board, we recognize and accept our role as community leaders. We support the values of our democracy and especially the right to free speech and assembly. We welcome vigorous public de discourse, even where disagreement may, may arise as a consequence. However, we also reserve the right to stand against those who would undermine our shared values or threaten our community's welcoming nature and sense of safety. We commit to a leadership role in support of the operating principles of tolerance, civility, dignity, and respect for all so as to sustain our town's cultural and religious diversity. And we commit in cooperation with the other town officials and staff to continue to build trust in our community and to the implementation and enforcement of applicable laws concerning discrimination, intimidation, illegal conduct, and hate crimes. Um, and again, this, this um, page and a half, page and a quarter, is intended as a preamble to a larger document called the Board of Selectmen Policy Doc. And Bob, I don't have an electronic version here. Can you pop that up as well? John, can I, can I sure. add a couple of things? So, actually, before um, you do, I just want to give folks the context so they understand. So this is the same heading I just read, but a preamble would be placed prior to the mission statement itself. And the, the mission statement, think of it as the bulleted list of conduct, behavior, and uh, operational detail that the board uh, and the town will execute against. So it's four or five pages here, municipal government, board of selectmen, um, again, this is more terse form, but it speaks to the affirmative of what we will do. And the document I just read would become a, a preface to this that, again, is I view as an operational document. Although it's got aspirational elements, there are operational elements of it as well. So that's the forum for tonight for the board. Barry, you had a comment? Yeah, so, yeah a few comments, actually. Thanks, John. Um, so first of all, I wanted to thank the folks who actually brought this to our attention. Um, you know, when this came up maybe a few months ago, um, you know, people were responding to those sort of things in general, and actually, since we convened, I don't know, maybe it was March, I don't remember, we've seen things that happen in town that, that we're now dealing with that, that really demonstrate that as much as we like to think that everything is great in Reading and this is a, an amazing town, that the things that, Im that are impacting the world outside of us are also impacting the town of Reading. So when, when we were asked to kind of work on this resolution, um, <laughs> both John and I as liaisons thought, um, it, while we think it's great to have a, a resolution, it's probably more important to kind of give folks an idea about how the town of Reading is gonna operate in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So our goal here, and the reason why we created sort of a preamble to an existing policy statement is to do two things. One is, to d is it's basically, it's, it's it date stamped and time, and it's signed. So basically, it's, it's a reflection of this sitting board of selectmen um, on, our, on our views um, and, and, and what we would like to see part of uh, how the town operates at this particular time. So it's timely. Our goal is also to make it timeless. In other words, no matter which five individuals sit in these chairs, that going forward, citizens of the town of Reading have an expectation to know how the town is going to operate, um, especially their highest elected board, is going to operate when the town is impacted by the things that we've just been witnessing in the last couple of weeks. So doing it as a preamble sort of says, okay, this is a date, place, and time, but making it part of our operate, you know, making it part of our policies makes it so that no matter who sits here, people can expect that there'll be um, that there'll be response <coughs> from the elected leadership in the town when things percolate as they have um, in the last few weeks. So um, you can imagine that that's a difficult task trying to sort of create something that both impacts today, but also impacts and governs um, what's going to happen tomorrow. So that's sort of the context of how we try to write this. Um, so thank you. I see some folks in the back, and you're all jammed in, and I can see everyone's trying to get one eyeball. There's a couple, there's one seat up here, and you're welcome. If you want to stand, you're just as easily to stand back here. And you, you'll get some fresh air, because we're controlling it back here. And, uh, but please, come on in. Don't, don't hesitate. Thank you. These are the box seats up here. These are the expensive <laughs> seats. <laughs>
Come on right up. Come on right up over here. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is, I'm sorry? Yeah, there's two seats. As we normally do to, as we normally do to um, start discussion, I'll entertain a motion to um, approve the preamble as it might be amended to the Board of Select Selectmen Missions and Values Statement of Policy. So Andrews. moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, yes. before we go there, are we going to entertain comment before we my intention vote is on this, this one way or the other? My intention is this is our policy document, that this is um, controlling our behavior, and that the conversation would ensue after this is complete as it might relate to the pro any proclamation or resolution. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Chairman, can I, can I offer sure. one technical and hopefully friendly amendment in the very last paragraph? It's just a parallelism. Sure. Uh, I would change the uh, words uh, and to the implementation and enforcement to be and to implement and enforce. Get rid of the shuns. Just well, and it's to it's parallel with build trust. You don't have any. Uh, so instead of saying the implementation, it'd be to implement and enforce. Yes. I like that smaller syllable. That's um, Is that agreeable to the seconder. Oh, yeah. That's, that's benign. Yeah. Yeah. We've, I don't know how many iterations this has gone through, so <laughs> this will just be 1,009. Okay. So, yeah. so, Bob, that's good. Bob, if you want to do that in yellow or. Actually, that's so. It's the same word. It's just a. Uh, you can ask our English teachers. So it's worse than well. You agree with me. Parallel structure. <laughs> to implement it. I got to beat it in my head. Like parallel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> John, you had your hand up? Um, yeah, I, I've got a couple of thoughts about this relative to how I, how I think it needs certain amendments. Um, responding to what um, Barry has said, as a timeless agreement, I think, first of all, signatories to this is superfluous. I think this comes from the Board of Selectmen, not from this individual board, that signatures from this individual board are superfluous to this kind of document. That's just a, in a preamble, I don't think this is something you sign on to. I think it's something, uh, to your point, it's policy. So if it said instead, for example, the, 2000, the, the May 2017 Board of Selectmen. Well, I've actually got a couple of different amendments and I've actually written them here and Go I'll ahead. be happy to share them with you. Go ahead. Uh, that is one of them. I just see it being um, at the very end, uh, a date stamp I understand. Barry brought that up. Reading Board of Selectmen, that's who we are. Um, this is designed to be a timeless document as was pointed out earlier and for us to be able to, you know, be so bold as to be the ones that okay. are permanently signed to it I think is probably inappropriate. Relative to if we if we move up a little, do you bit. want to take these in order then? Um, Separately. Well, and then I'll just hand this out. And you can look at it. I'll just I think our room and then we'll go. If it's what you sent, it's in the packet. Is it? And he's got my packet. But I thought you. Yeah, we can take them in order if you want. I don't. Yeah, don't so I think John is proposing an amendment to drop the signature signatures line, recognizing that who we are is already evident. Um, I suppose if, I suppose that's in place of that you put Reading Board of Selectmen yeah. and today and yeah. today's 30th 2017 is that a motion? Oh, uh, second. that's a motion that's an amendment yes. a motion to amend I have a second any for any discussion yes. on the proposed motion yeah. Bob what is the structure used in the remainder of the uh, policies to indicate changes is there is that like change this date change that date well this is an authorship question <laughs> you know this this document has not been changed enough yeah. to warrant any that. historical reference really that doesn't mean it's proper all right um, the charter and bylaws have historical reference with footnotes but it doesn't cite a body like the bylaw <coughs> committee or town meeting it just says here's the change um, i i am not familiar with a policy document that actually cites the name of a body not that i'm saying it's wrong it's just more of a here are the facts and on you know April you know town meeting in 2012 this change happened and it doesn't show track changes it just says yeah, yeah. this paragraph happened this time similar to the you have to then do research to see what the change was 
any other so there's questions? no precedent. You're not doing it right or wrong. Andy? So I, I, I hate to uh, be the uh, to rain on the parade here, <coughs> but I, I, I looked through this a number of times. I thought it was well written, and I think it's a it's a um, I see the intent. I see it as something different from a human rights resolution, which is an affirmational document versus a policy document that guides excuse me, we're just right, talking that about guides the, the, the policy document that, that guides our behavior as, right. as a board. And I think that's great. Um, but uh, I'd like more than a couple days to review it, get public feedback on it, and um, send you my comments, my thoughtful comments on it. Point of order. The other thing is point um, of order. Yes, yeah, the point of order is I thought we were in discussion around an amendment. Oh, correct. I apologize. Yeah, that's what I was indicating. We're only talking about the subject matter of striking the signature okay. line. Full stop. Okay. Any other discussion on the signature line? I think when we sort of thought of composing this, we wanted to show what this Board of Selectmen stood for at a certain place and time. Um, obviously, anybody could just look to see who the Board of Selectmen were on the 30th. 2017. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with striking that. Um, okay. So, any other comments? All those in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those against? So, are you for or against? So, so that was just for striking the Correct. signatures. Correct. Yes. The way this works is yes. yep. we're just going to discuss it. a change. Somebody will make a motion right. for a change. It'll be seconded. The discussion then concentrates only on the change. If it passes, the amended language is embodied. We'll have a vote on the full document <laughs> completed. All right. Any other proposed amendments? Uh, uh, John? Um, as we, the main body um, on page one, this, this is a, in my it printing is, of this, I have two pages. Okay. And the first page um, takes us kind of in a narrative statement, but brings us to the last two sentences as um, resolution like commitments asking us to commit on behalf, it appears, of citizens and future boards. I, I actually think that there's a, a way to keep this consistent with the preamble. So in, in sentence, second to last sentence, uh, that's currently we commit uh, to a leadership role, I propose an amendment that we accept our leadership role in support of the operating principles of tolerance, civility, dignity, and respect for all, so as to sustain our town's cultural and religious diversity. And in a similar vein, for the exact same reason, um, the last sentence, uh, I would propose the amendment that it's our enduring goal in cooperation with other towns. In other words, the we commits, to me, um, is flawed in a comparison to the rest of the preamble. The rest of the preamble talks about the operating principles of the Board of Selectmen. It doesn't speak for or commit future boards or citizens who may or may not agree with this. And so I suggest a change in language to make it consistent with the rest of the preamble and move an amendment to those changes. I think you're missing the word AN in the bottom Which paragraph one? after it is and enduring. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> it is and endure. It is our oh, enduring our, goal. Our, sorry, our, our. because it's the board of select. Yes, thank you. This is I can pass can these. You highlight, can you highlight those two changes, Bob? Yeah. No, 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 perfect. Okay. Any other comments on that, Bob? No, I think that those are highly appropriate changes because I think I think the change in style oh, I um, yeah. makes it a flawed document at the end, and I'd like to see it flow. Um, in a way that's consistent with what's going on in the front. And no changes elsewhere in either paragraph? Right? No. No. Okay. No. Thanks. Um, so, uh, do we have a motion to, I'm sorry, you've made the motion. I've made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Mr. Ensminger. Discussion? Seeing none. I, I have a, I, I'd like to know, I mean, you and, and Barry put this together. What do you, is, do you see a significant difference, John? I think the payload in, in that sentence is in the second half. How, how you get there is, is somewhat not. arbitrary. Mm -hmm. 
we accept, mm -hmm. we commit. I mean, as opposed I think John's to, right. point is commitment is hard to do when you're not around. When you're not around anymore, it's going to be real hard for you to commit to do I may be committed. Whereas the <laughs> virtual board right. will be there. Right. That's, I think, his point. I see. I see. Thank you. Any other further discussion? All those in favor? 5-0. Okay. Mr. Any other proposals? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment. Okay. Um, Bob, I've sent it to you. Unfortunately, I did not send it to everybody in advance. I have, do have copies. copies? I do have copies here. So I'd like to give Caitlin one just so she has it for the record. Chief, do you have enough for the chief? Uh, I think I do. We have two chiefs today. Or, <laughs> yeah, we got, we're bracketed. That's right. You guys have to get to them first before you get to us. Bob, I sent it to you in a word form. I don't know if you can get it up there. I was just going to see if I can. I didn't get it, so I'm just looking. Oh, you didn't? Oh, here it is, 8, 830. <laughs> yeah. Um, the wonders of technology. Probably best if I just type it in. Wait a second, I'm not going to get a little bit too much of it. Which paragraphs are these amending? So, actually, yeah, I was, was going to do that. So, Mr. Chair, if you allow me to kind of. <laughs> why don't we get them on the board here yeah. so we can see them? Yeah, where, where do you start? Right here? Actually, what, I, what I'm proposing is to, uh, I also have it in two pages, so I don't know what number it is. One, two, three, is strike the entire fourth paragraph. That's this one? As the town's elected executive board. Okay, and in its place, create two paragraphs. Um, and I'll read them. Uh, a lot of the wording is the same, it's just that I organize it a little bit differently and change some language. So the next paragraph would be, which is actually similar to the wording in there, we welcome vigorous public discourse even where disagreement arises as a consequence. Then a new paragraph, uh, as the town's elected executive board, we recognize and accept our role as community leaders, which I think is the same as what's in the draft now. We cannot and will not prevent free speech and or assembly or take action against those based on the views they express. We will, however, critically challenge bigoted and prejudiced statements, especially when those words and the actions they may incite seek to deny the constitutional protections of others and undermine our community's welcoming nature and sense of safety. And do you want me to? If you want to take a 10 minute break. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's why I sent it to you. Well in yeah. in so Bob, do you want me to, you want me to do it again? No, I've got it oh, right oh, here. Let me just talk for a while. Okay. <laughs> so, a couple of reasons um, for these changes, and, and, and also, too, for the record, this is language that I had contributed to the draft that did not get into the packet that, fi that everybody saw tonight. So, this isn't anything new. This was just sort of part of my contribution. And let me tell you why I'm proposing this the way I am. So, in the draft that we have before us, um, it basically states that... Um, the board, it's the, hold on, let me find my notes. Oh, okay. So basically, it states that the board reserves the right to speak out against this. What that means, too, is that the board also reserves the right not to speak out against it. So rather than with our goal, if our goal was to create a timeless document that basically um, informs the community about how the town of Reading is, and especially its elected leadership board, is going to respond in the advent of hate speech or hate action. Um, this is not a policy. If we can, we have that now. We could speak up, or we can choose not to speak up. Mr. Arena very um, uh, did a great job the other night. Basically, when the first swa when the second swastika was found talked about that that was a detestable act, and I commend you, John, for that. Chief, the words that you put out in the proposal were also equally eloquent, as was the town managers and the superintendent. If that's the case, if we can choose to speak it out, we can also choose not to. So why would the Board of Selectmen choose not to take action on this? So by putting it the way I did, it basically informs everybody that the Board will speak out when these happen that it's not gonna depend on the five people sitting in these chairs to determine what kind of action that you're gonna have. That's always the case, but then that's not a policy. If you're gonna create a policy, you have to go, and especially one that's timely, you have to be able to say, 
that no matter who sits here, this is how the Board of Selectmen of Reading, Massachusetts is going to act when these things happen. Um, now, I thought long and hard about this because we heard from many people in the community about <laughs> protecting and also the, and the, town, the town council who, who played a vital role in this. That it's important that we basically don't shill free speech and that we don't basically, as a board, say you can and cannot do that. I've had numerous conversations with people at the ACLU. Now, there's no greater organization than the ACLU that defends free speech. But at the same time, they simultaneously speak out against it. And in fact, the ACLU states that they don't, they don't want to see elected boards basically say, you can't do this, you can't assemble here, you can't say that. We want, the, we want elected leaders to basically um, protect it, um, but at the same time, speak out against it. Um, and, and so that's why it's important that we can both simultaneously protect and defend a person's right for assembly and speech, but at the same time, speak out against it. And there's a great reference to, we sort of do this in Reading right now. I don't know how many people remember, but 10 years ago, the high school was putting on a play called The Laramie Project. Um, I don't know if people remember what The Laramie Project is, but it was, it, was, it was a dramatization of basically the brutal torture and murder of a gay teenager in Wyoming, and then the aftermath of what happened in the community. The high school put that play on. At, the sa at that time, the night of the performance, um, the town of Reading was visited, and I say that in quotes, by members of the Westboro Baptist Church, Westboro, Kansas. I know a lot of people shaking their heads. I think they know who those people are. Those are the people who go to funerals of, of dead soldiers and protest because the army allows gays and lesbians in the military. Um, the town of Reading did a tremendous job in making sure that those people came, were able to assemble and protest and say what they had to say, and they were kept safe. Meanwhile, across the street, there was about 500 people from Reading also <coughs> exercising their right of speech and assembly. But those people came, were protected, were made safe, and then they left. So everybody's rights were protected, but the community stood out and the community responded. What, this, what my amendment does is basically, it does not make it <coughs> reserve the right, it makes an expectation that the Board of Selectmen, as the, as the town elected leaders, will speak out and play a role uh, in this. So I, I think it gives us more teeth. I think it, um, it protects people's right to assemble and speak. We're not going to do anything that, you know, if, if we don't agree with what they say, we're not going to do anything against them, but we're going to act and we're going to speak up. And so that this amendment, I think, takes care of both the free speech aspect and also gives people the comfort of knowing that their elected leaders are going to speak up. I've got a commentary. Yeah? Uh, Barry, perhaps you could explain uh, your choice of a particular phrase or what you might have had in mind in writing it. Uh, uh, this follows the words, actions they may incite, seek to deny the constitutional protections of others that undermine our community's welcoming nature. Uh, can you give me an example of what you're talking about here? I think the swastikas are a great example of that. That denies constitutional protections? Right, if, or, so, or speaks up against. Okay, that, that right. meets the right. second right. one. Right. Get that. How about constitutional protections? So in other words, what, 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 I, don't <coughs> want, what I don't want this to be is, is to have, have it be interpreted as such that if someone says a bad word to somebody, the Board of Fleckman is then going to come out and speak. That the, that the threshold. Of, of, of what will require our action would be when those folks deny the, right, the, the rights of others. And so, you know, incidents of, you know, uh, anti-Muslim, anti-Jewish, anti-gay, right, where, where those folks have just as much a right as anybody else, um, when, when those actions come, that, that we're going to speak out. So uh, it, it raises the threshold of not just, well, somebody call me a name. It's going to be something that's serious. David, did you raise your hand? I'm sorry. I did not. Raise my hand. <laughs> oh, sorry. Don't scratch. John. Um, yeah. So, it, what it, what this seems to boil down to is really the last sentence. 
because everything else is a rehash of what we already have in there. Correct? So, ba well, basically, it's the oper it's the operational part of this. It's not but what we I guess what I'm right, asking you, Barry, but is that, what that we will. That the last sentence is really the is really the amendment because I think the other right. sentences just, are currently existent right. in this document. I mentioned that, so I did break it up. Okay, so so what you've done is rearranged it. Um, and again, I, I guess I come back to my belief that when we state in a declarative, we will, however, critically challenge bigoted and prejudiced statements. I mean, we can choose to do that. We have, as you aptly point out earlier in your amendment, everybody's got their right to free speech. Everybody's got the opportunity to say what they want to say. For us to, in a declarative way, in this particular kind of document, um, say what we're going to do, and we're essentially telling other boards of selectmen at some time in the future what they will do, I, I think really flies in the face of the preamble as it was originally set up. Now, to me, you know, the second part of this somewhat flies in the face of the first part of your amendment. To me, they're, at, they're, they're somewhat at cross purposes. And, you know, the other part of this amendment I think that has this has this been reviewed? No. Is this the same language you had uh, over the weekend? It's similar. Yeah. It's not exactly the same. So well, it's, it's a little it's, different. It's, yeah. It, it, basically, the notion is 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 not that we can because we can anyway. So why put it in the policy? Jeff? It's we will. Okay. So furthermore, I think if we follow this sentence, <laughs> I have a fundamental objection to we will because we can do exactly what we want to do exactly what John did the other day from the chair. We were welcome to say whatever we wanted to say referencing a particular situation. Nothing changes. Um, to put into a document to tell five people, whether the, this five people or some other five people you know, in the future, what we will do, I think, I think flies in the face of what the preamble is. Furthermore, as you read the balance of that amending sentence, it's a reiteration of something that currently exists. I mean, what this says is especially when these words and actions, they may, they may incite, deny, or seek to deny the constitutional protections of others, undermine. All of that is currently already addressed in the very last sentence of this, of the previous document that we, where we are at this time. I mean, I don't see, what I find, at least this is a personal belief I have, when government's going to write a document, less is more. More is not better. And what I think we're doing in some cases is having an open question whether or not part of this statement flies in the face of an earlier statement. Secondly, I think that what it does is creates a declarative in a narrative format. And lastly, it restates the obvious that's already written into the document. That's just my take on this. Question. Yes, sir. Uh, so, John, you said, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I must have missed it. You said this something in here flies in the face of something that's already been stated in here. No, that's not what I said. Oh. Well, would well, you like me to repeat it? Yeah, please. Okay. So, what I'm saying is that we will, however, critically challenge bigoted and prejudiced statements. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's telling us what we have to say when in the previous sentence, it tells us we can say whatever we want, which is naturally our constitutional right as Americans. Everyone in this room has the opportunity to say whatever it is they want to say. And I do agree with what is a restatement of in the very last part of this. I mean, look, you can't rain on somebody's constitutional protections. You can't deny them rights. And if you look at the document, it already tells us that. It's clearly it tells us that not. it's our enduring goal in cooperation with other town officials and staff continuing to build trust and to implement and enforce <coughs> applicable laws concerning discrimination, intimidation, illegal conduct, and hate crimes. That's it's there right, already. That's the action point. What my amendment does is that it, it, it informs the community that that's what they can expect from their board of selectmen. Not that they have the right to reserve the right to do it. Um, because then that, what that does, it just basically, it, it, that's determined upon the five people that sit in the chairs. 
I think when you do a policy, what you're basically doing is that you're making it timeless. And so therefore, no matter who sits in these chairs, whether it's five years from now or 50 years from now, that so this Board of Selectmen in 2017 has basically made it a mission of the Board of Selectmen that we will stand up to them. And, and I don't see, and I think there's a, there's a big difference between reserving the right to and letting people know that that's something that they can expect from their elected leaders. Your that's the difference. Is your intention to compel the board to make statements? That's, that's what say, this statement. That's what this. That's what this amendment does. It's not conditional. This says you will do it. Is that your intention? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, before I let me get my thoughts in. My only. I have two quick thoughts. They're both technical. <laughs> the statement that begins with "We cannot and will not prevent free speech or assembly or take action," completing to the end of that sentence, is uh, superfluous. I mean, statements shouldn't have a statement about what you're not going to do. You should have a statement about what you are going to do. I think you did that to set up the next statement as a juxtaposition, which is fine. Um, but I think it's more powerful if you take it out and simply say, we will, um, I guess you drop however, we will critically challenge, blah, blah, blah. That's, it, it's just a way to make it more punchy. The second is in the, in the sentence that's um, after the semicolon, especially when there's words and actions they may incite. Now we're talking about prospective activity that may not have occurred yet. And now we're into challenging folks based on actions they may do. Um, that's hard to know when you do that. Well, I think one of the things that one of the members of the community handed out that, that I think might have been in our packet in the past was that hate just doesn't happen. It doesn't get dropped on a field. It's a continuum and it builds. So, one of, the, one of the things that it starts with is basically not paying attention to the word, doing nothing. And then it builds, and then it builds, and then it builds. What this seeks to do is basically um, state that when that speech happens, we're going to stand up to it. Because by not doing that, um, it allows it to build. Um, so that's why I thought it was important. Any other comments, Andrew? I, I, again, it's to help inform, to help them be better informed about how to look at this uh -huh. Barry's Amendment. Uh -huh. the, what is, what's our goal, what's our purpose, what are we Barry's Amendment is to drop the fourth paragraph of the document and substitute the one that's on the board there in red, the right. one that's in front of you. So I, I, could make, I could make a better decision about his uh, change if I understood what's the objective purpose goal of this preamble. The preamble states what the posture of the Board of Selectmen is relative to um, the rights of citizens and the responsibilities of citizens mm -hmm. and what we expect out of the town in terms of responsibility. The balance of this document is really where the meat of it is. This, if you will, is an introduction. That's why I went through earlier mm -hmm. the balance of it. We talked about mission and values, and mm -hmm. you remember there were a number of bullet points? Yep. That's in your packet tonight as well. Yeah, I got that. So read this not just in a vacuum, but read this as in concert as a continuation into the policy statement that we live by thus far. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Any further discussion? John. John, I have a question. Yes, um, I'm sorry to ask this, but I just want to make be clear on your intent, Baron. Um, in the crossed out original version, is, the, is your only in change intended to replace we also reserve the right to stand with we will, essentially? Is that what it boils down to? Right. Or it's is not it more? No, I, it's, it's basically to, to not is to give direction to future boards and give comfort to the community that when A, when A occurs, the Board of Selectmen will act appropriately. Okay. Not may, which is what this document says. It says we may, it means we may not. So okay. I, I think it's more important that um, going forward, that that's our policy, that we will. Okay, so I have a comment. On yeah, Andrew? So when I read we will, however, critically challenge bigoted and prejudiced statements, et cetera. The critically, the word critically there, critically challenge, says to me that uh, the board will first think about and consider whatever 
the bigoted and prejudiced statements were uh, to determine if they uh, may incite, seek to deny constitutional protections, undermine communities' welcoming nature and safety. So in other words, it's not a, we must, the board must act in every case that someone says a bad word to somebody else. It's that the board will critically think about, uh, critically challenge uh, bigoted and prejudiced statements. Yeah, I think now maybe that's an over interpretation, I don't know. It critically modifies the word challenge, so I think it's meant to be a detailed right. challenge. It's not to, to think about whether you challenge. It doesn't okay. make it a qualifier. It says that you will challenge. It modifies the word challenge. Um, sorry, I cut you off. No, any no, other discussion? There, you, there, fair point. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Seeing no other discussion, all those in favor of the proposed amendment shown behind <coughs> Bob, please raise your hand. All those against? All those abstaining? It's 2 2. Motion does not pass. Go back to the original motion. Okay. Any other amendments on the proposed uh, preamble? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion on the original document. It's already been moved. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. All those in favor of the document as it's now amended, uh, please raise your hand. Those against? And the motion passes. It's not a policy, as it's written. So, I, 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 Mr. Chairman, I, I think that we have a lot of policy here that that I was told is is obsolete, and 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 so I see. I'm discouraged at how quickly this was. Uh, brought up to the to other selecting myself at least um, I got it uh, two or three days or three days ago I think um, and um, and then to actually make a forever policy if you will in in this uh, I mean I like government to move fast but but I'm concerned at how fast this moved so so you understand it is before you got here this mm -hmm. activity started around Middle of January. Yes. Middle of December, actually. December. So this dis this discussion, in one form or another, has now spanned um, over five months. So I understand this discussion may be relatively new, but we can't deliberate other than in session. Mm -hmm. Two of the members of the board worked on this, and even we weren't in agreement. But yeah. if you will, this isn't so much a nice, smooth document. It's more of a tossed salad with independent ideas. I, to your I, comment about permanence, mm -hmm. this is as permanent as this board or any subsequent board chooses to make it. So nothing is written in stone around here. But I would, I would respectfully disagree with you as to um, how long this has been in play. We, the human rights resolution has been in play since February or something. Mm -hmm. That's a resolution, which that's is different that's been from changed a policy. Also. So, so um, I, at the, the first time I heard that it, it was being considered as a preamble to our policy, was I think three days ago or something like that. I had to check my inbox. To me, a policy. So a policy is, and it's also rather different than the the human rights resolution. So um, I would have liked some more time to go through this as a policy versus a, a resolution. I hear what you're saying. Given the amount of time we've spent mm -hmm. uh, and the other task ahead of us, and the fact that two of your members. Had both felt this should be a preamble. Um, I thought it's entirely appropriate to bring it here tonight. I understand you may personally not, but um, at least the majority of the board did feel it should be a preamble. And Andy, just so, so you know, John and I worked sort of uh, together on this, and we and we purposely didn't share with other members of the board because yep. you can't deliberate. We wanted just to put our ideas forward. Now, obviously, we agreed to disagree. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue to agree to disagree. Yeah. Um, you know, going forward, that's what democracy is all about. But um, the one thing that John and I did agree on was that that this would be a board of selectmen document, um, as opposed to us um, responding to a document that was presented by the outside. And and while I'm on have the floor and have that thought, I do want to thank the people that brought this to our attention um, and, and 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 really brought it to the forefront. Um, maybe you were prescient in what was about to happen, 
um, because the original, um, a lot of the original comments about not doing this is that we don't have any problems here. And fast forward 60, 75 days, you know, we just found out we're just like everybody else. So um, I, I want to personally thank the people who brought this forward. Um, it did get the attention of the Board of Selectmen. Maybe it didn't appease what you had in mind. Maybe it did. But this is now the policy of the Board of Selectmen going forward. Um, and what it does is, is that it doesn't matter who sits in the five chairs. So um, that's something that, um, you know, people should think about as they leave. So. Mayor, I'd like to thank you for your time and energy as well, I, and other members of the board, um, as well as members of the petitioner committee. Um, those in the audience have been extremely painful, painful, patient. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's been painful too, I don't know. Um, but I'll entertain public comment now. If you choose to make a comment, please stand, state your name, the address you live at, and make your comment. There are quite a few people here, uh, so brevity and specificity is appreciated. Anyone like to make a public comment? In the back. I'm John Musso from Reading. John, where do you live? Reading. Uh, street. Yeah, street. Well, you know, my mailbox is damaged and cost about $600. <laughs> Damage, okay? Your number used to be on the mailbox. <laughs> I don't want to identify the exact street for that reason. Okay. What I'm going to say yes. may disturb people. I may be the target. In any case, I just want to record it. It's on TV. Critically, crit critically challenged. I don't agree with the current couples that get these arrangements. I believe in natural marriage. I'm saying the bigger the comment, if someone says that or feels that way. Now that person can literally harass me, critically challenge. You're going to challenge me. I don't care if you have the word critical or not. You're going to challenge me. You're giving them the right to challenge another person, and he has free speech. I wear this cross. Some people don't like it. Same deal. So there's a very weak point there about that word challenge. It can be interpreted many ways, and laws should be made in such a way that they can be interpreted by many people. They have to be clearer. John, so you failed at this right now. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. The, the critically challenged edit did not, did not pass. It's not in the finish. I agree. I'm just getting ready for the next round. Sure. As, as the author of that, Mr. Russo, um, let me tell you what I meant by that. I didn't mean that you, as an opponent of same-sex marriage, would be targeted. But the Board of Selectmen would speak out against that if you, in your comments and then your actions, seek to deny the rights of someone else. And now, that's when you invoke the Board of Selectmen. So again, it's, it's explicitly stated your rights of free speech are not impinged. However, when you impinge the rights of others in your actions, that's what it, now, that's what would have triggered that. It's not in the document. So I was the author of that, so I just wanted to clarify that for, okay. for your edification. Any other comments? Just, Sorry? I, just, I can respond. Please stand. These kinds of things continue to grow. This is the first step of many rounds. So I just laid out my position clearly so everyone understands that. This is going to be an ongoing problem, and it's going to continue. Going in the other direction, in the same direction it's going now. Any other comments and questions? In the back, please. Hi, I'm Sherry Van Den Acker, 271 Summer Avenue. Um, I remember when the resolution came forward, and Chairman Arena, you had asked, if this resolution passes, what's going to be different tomorrow? And I guess when I look at what passed tonight, I wonder what's going to be different tomorrow. I don't really see anything different because this um, was pointed out, the board has now reserved the right not to speak against acts of hate. And in the final paragraph where there's a commitment, it's a commitment to uphold applicable laws. Don't you have to do that anyway? <laughs> I mean, you're compelled to uphold applicable laws. You would think so. I so. don't really see anything that's changed as a result of this preamble as it's written, you've seen, You've seen this board. However, Go ahead. So, <laughs> I do want to say that I really commend um, the statements that have come out
from the town manager and the selectmen and the uh, chief of police and the work the kids are doing in the high school because quite frankly I feel that they're taking a leadership role that I wish um, I would like to see this board take. To. Thank you. To answer your questions directly, Sherry, thank you for your comments. Yeah. Um, you've seen this board and me specifically come out very hard over the initial um, incident. And I don't need to be enabled or told to go do it. And I, most of the folks on this board are similarly type A's. They're going to go do it anyway. That's really the thought, is what, what allows for enforcement is full information and full activity of the citizens. It's actions, not words. It's deeds, not words. The words may be helpful, but at the end of the day, it's the, the character and the ethics and the core of the individuals you have here. And that's why putting the right people in office is helpful. You're going to get that kind of performance out of me every time. It doesn't matter what that page says. Um, I can't speak for future boards, but I do believe at the end of the day, it comes down to the personal character of the individual and what they're going to do. On the matter of speech, our guidance from town council was fairly specific. You can't impinge on the free exercise of free, free speech, free thought, free association, and the exercise of religion, full stop. There's a gray area, and our goal, my goal, was to stay out of that gray area because it just sets us up for, as the previous speaker um, at least referenced, um, potentially getting into trouble. So while some may feel this doesn't go far enough, I think at the end of the day, you've got five individuals that are not going to put up with any nonsense. And that's really the best outcome you can hope for. We're very aware of what's going on in the town. There is a trim. I probably spent three or four hours on the phone um, in the last week alone with our town manager on these subjects. You don't know anything that's about all. that. That's <laughs> all. I don't, I don't bother advertising that. And the only reason I'm bringing it up now is you ask the question, what's the difference going to be? The answer is, you got an engaged board. Um, and I, I dare say that we're probably as active as, as any board I've been involved with over the last five and a half years. So, if I may. Sure. so and I should have thanked you too because you did make a strong statement and I think a powerful one. And I thank you for that when it's that not, came out. It's not the statement though. But <laughs> what I'm saying is I don't see how what you just passed tonight has anything to do with you, know, you make a personal commitment, I commend that. I celebrate that, but I don't see that anything's changed as a result of what you just passed. Thank you. I understand. Other comments, please. Please stand. Yes, Eileen Leterio, and I'm, I live at Deborah Drive in Reading. And first of all, I do want to thank all of the selectmen for the hours and hours that you expended to try to come up with a document that would satisfy uh, people with different and disparate viewpoints, so thank you. You definitely went over and above the expectation, the responsibilities, and working overtime to, to produce this document. On my first read this afternoon when I opened my computer, I actually was quite impressed with the tone of the first four paragraphs. It was very positive, it was very uplifting. Um, I, I uh, like the phraseology of, of welcoming and the hope you know, that was contained in those paragraphs? Oh, that was, that was intention. my intention. Uh, it was your intention. Okay, good. Yeah, it, it um, you know, certainly to me uh, was a unifying element, those first four paragraphs. So um, I think it was absolutely incredible over the last five months that you, had, you were collecting uh, a plethora of information, um, you know, through emails and interviews and public <coughs> meetings and so forth, and you were able to assimilate all that and organize it into a document that I feel, on the, and this especially on the first page, um, was very positive. So thank you. Um, I also agree with John uh, in your stylistic changes. You know, instead of the we commit, that stylistic, it, it, we needed a more of a consistent, appropriate uh, style entry to each paragraph. So that that. I, I agree with that totally. Um, I also think uh, that it passed the uh, three C's test. And don't think you're getting a C on it. You're not. You're actually getting an A++ because the three C's are clarity, cohesiveness, and conciseness. So I would give you know this board a, a definite pass on the three C's. Um, and with that said, um, I only had, you know, just one query, one question. I'm not too sure, and I know this isn't probably the time to investigate it to any great extent, 
but on the very last uh, paragraph when it was mentioned implementation and enforcement. I'm just curious about, you know, who is going to take responsibility for that enforcement? Would it be the, um, you know, the, our, our police department? Or, you know, what, what the enforcement uh, piece of it? I'm not too sure where that's leading. Yeah, we can't, as a, as a board, we can't direct other departments to, to do it. So it would be on the oh, gentleman or, or the schools, schools initially. Yeah. 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 It's a it okay. speaks, I think, to in cooperation with other town officials and staff. I mean, we're not an enforcing body, really. Uh, Bob? Yeah, okay. yeah, just to amplify that, um, the original document um, over the weekend sent to town council was a little broader. It said, I, I'm not going to remember the exact words, but it included the school department, uh, specific town departments, what have you. And the town council said, absolutely not. You have no jurisdiction over some of those people you're listing in the charter. So you can't tell any of them what to do even if they would listen. So this is the phrasing he suggested in cooperation with. I see. Just to be clear. Thank you. Other comments or questions this evening? In the back, yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Rebecca Bailey. I live at Forest Road. This is my first time at one of these. I'm a little nervous. It's not <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> so are we. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say two things. One, I agreed with Sherry um, that what's written here is feels fairly toothless, and I really want to thank Barry for the edit that unfortunately did not pass. I think that would have been, it would have given a little more strength to what we're trying to do here. Um, so I really appreciate your efforts there. Um, thank you for that. Um, I also wanted to say that um, we just heard someone who, who felt that the first few paragraphs were positive. I felt like they left some things out. I think there's a lot of history that they kind of gloss over. Um, I think that there, it's not as happy and pleasant as we all would like to believe, and I'm just, I, I don't think we should forget that there are incidents in the past within this town that, um, that maybe don't fall into this nice, happy view of things. So just would like everyone to keep that in mind. Thank you. Other comments? Okay, tell me over here. Yeah, Dick Holmes, uh, Lane. Uh, I see that this is setting up uh, this endless conflict between the First Amendment and the Fox Police. I just, you, some hate speech is notoriously difficult to define. Sometimes, you know, it's like pornography, you know it when you see it. But other times, it's one thing, one person, another, another person. And I just see this as an endless conflict. Uh, the, I wasn't going to say this, but the, the comment about history. Sequence of Indian wars that we had, the original, the original uh, occupants. Uh, there was conflict for 100 years or more, and then it moved out west and went on for 200 more years. And oh, and there was also the little matter of the witch trials. Different. That was Salem. That wasn't Reading. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I deliberately didn't mention Salem. I was trying to say, but you know, I mean, there was conflict that sort of ugly, resolved in an ugly way for for a few years. At least that. And the last, the uh, third comment is, and you'll have to forgive me for my cynicism, um, I haven't heard anything about graffiti and reading for, for decades. And I think it's just remarkably coincidental and convenient that all of a sudden there's a sort of building to a climax. We suddenly start to see one, one episode after another of Swastikas. Now, that doesn't prove anything, but as I say, that's, that's the way a cynical person would look at it. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Holmes. Respond to Mr. Holmes really quick. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for pointing out the the, the um, part about the 1600s and the, and the Indian Wars and the, and the witch, witch trials. Um, I think it, it does contradict the statement that uh, the earliest immigrants had a respect for unfamiliar cultures, faith, traditions, and viewpoints. Yeah, that was the point. Because they, they didn't really always. Um, and uh, I forget my other point, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry, I missed, I missed the hands. Who had the hand up over here? I didn't have it over there, but she actually had her hand okay, up first. Okay. 
The lady in the back defers to the lady in the front. That's very nice. Uh, Teresa Wiggins, 61 Terrace Park. Hi, Teresa. Hi. Um, so I showed up because I thought we were discussing the human rights resolution. And so I would like to ask this board if you will ever vote on the human rights resolution as proposed. I understand what that vote would be, but I would just like to know if that is ever going to be voted on, or is this meant to replace it? Because in my estimation, they are well <coughs> I'll let Barry speak for himself, but um, yeah. as one of the two folks that worked on it, our intention was that the language document ought to be the board's handiwork, and that it ought to be words that we had generated. No disrespect, but asking somebody to sign up to a separate document, different phraseology, different tone, different meanings. And the second is it had to be operational. Rather than be aspirational, it had to be stuff that we would actually do. Now, I, I, I disagree entirely with the thought of this being toothless. Much of what you see this board do, or ha ha this board does, is invisible to you. It doesn't mean nothing gets done. I can't tell you the amount of uh, hours invested. Um, and uh, contrastingly, just because the document says work hard and do a good job doesn't mean people are going to work hard and do a good job. What does it is character. And that's really comes down to the individual. So it, to me, it's a word versus deed thing. That describes what our desired outcome is. Maybe it isn't in the right tone, or, or one that would appeal to everyone, but it's kind of meant to be dry. It's, we're going to go do this, and we're going to do the best job we can to let you jump in there. Yeah, and, and there probably hasn't been a day since you guys first came here that I haven't thought about this, and sort of my role as a select is, versus my role as a father, as an American, uh, as a parent, you know, in a variety of different ways. But you came to us, and I, and I sort of put on my selectman hat as sort of an elected leader of the town, better or for worse. Um, and so when we thought about it, um, we thought that it was better, since you were asking the board to act, that the board act. And, and, and in writing and drafting sort of the things that, that led up to this, I know when I was kind of putting pen to paper, really tried to use some of the aspirational things that were in your original, um, your original proposal, well, maybe not your original one, but the third or the fourth one, that it, that it basically wasn't going to be as necessarily a dry document, but something that basically acknowledges the fact that who we are, where we've come from, the issues that we're dealing with, but really more importantly, what can you expect from your elected leader? And I think that was sort of, to us, I don't want to say more important, but sort of, in a way, what you asked us to do. I just want to clarify that I'm not a drafter, but I'm an avid supporter of the HRR. Um, but I do agree with what you think about Other comments? So I'd like to, I, I need to respond to what Teresa said, because, um, you know, I think campaign promises all that. Campaign promises are important to try to keep. And when I ran for Selectman, I was very open and honest, whether you disagree with me or not, um, in being in support of a human rights resolution in some form. Um, and, and that's not because I want to control your thinking or tell you how to think. I'm not a thought police type of person. Um, but I do think there are, um, I do think the human rights resolution was getting at something that uh, struck a chord with me that, as I said, I think was applicable back in the 70s when I was a kid as it is today. Um, and, and I, and um, so I, it, it, things didn't go my way. I'm, I, I'm only one vote. But um, I would have liked to have voted for the human rights resolution. Any other comments from the folks in the audience today? Yes, Elaine. Elaine Webb, Precinct 1, 309 Pearl Street, also on the school committee. I just would like to take a moment to assure the community, because we've been talking about what the selectmen will do, that around these incidents, our superintendent of schools, teachers, principals, um, certainly not only do we take action, but we have policies, we have accountability. We do critically challenge. We're, we're an educational system, so we focus not only on understanding the why, but we get behind a more a, a breadth of understanding for all students, so that students can grow from any experience like this. 
and so that we can provide restorative justice and we can provide consequences that students can learn from. So I just want to assure the community that you're not looking at the school committee's policy, but it, these are our schools as elected officials in, in, on the school committee. We all have taken this very seriously and have had similar numbers of hours of conversation and processing with our superintendent and he with the principals. I also just want to say I've heard young people talk about it's just a symbol. And the thing is, they even, even for us, this was uh, the symbol that this, the, the horror that this symbol represents is not something that we know personally, but we may know people who had their loved ones murdered. It was six million Jews and five million others. And so when young people think it's, they don't get why this is so important to all of us. But I want to assure the community, we do in the schools. And we need to deal with it in a way that everyone can learn from it and that we can sort of end this, these kinds of incidents and relate it. So I just want to show the community that the committee is definitely making that. Other comments? Yes. Chris um, Arnold, sound like right you're getting ready. Um, when you mentioned the, uh, the, what happened with the swastika, are we taught, are our children taught history today? Absolutely. I read about it in yeah. school. Yes, there you know, I learned about it, and, and I knew the horrors. And if any child reads our history books today in school, they know that this they is know. a symbol of hate. They know it. And that is hate. But, I mean, what we're trying to, I feel our town now is more divided than it's ever been since this, pro this proclamation came up. Our I think we're trying, we're trying to divide us down the center. And I, I just can't understand why this is going on. Um, We've got to, hate is taught. It is not something that- We're not teaching it in the school. <laughs> well, but you're learning it from parents. Parents discuss things, kids hear things. And, and if they are taught to accept other people as different, I mean, you accept what they are and love them for what they are. I mean, I, that's the whole thing. And I, I just can't understand why we, we seem like we're making mountains out of molehills. And I agree with, I mean, the minute I read that following Friday, first there was the, this, there was a meeting here, a, a, a selectman meeting, and then there was the, uh, there was a town meeting afterwards. This human rights resolution came up, and that, in both of those situations, there were heated discussions. Then, uh, then the next morning, there's a swastika found, and then there's more, and there's more, and then there's, quote, this pipe bomb. I mean, this all just seems like it's happened within this sequence. Yeah. It hasn't happened in a long time. All of a sudden, it's all come together. What is, the, where are the kids hearing this from? This is what I'm saying. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Please, uh, two thoughts. Please direct your comments to the chair. And please, comments only, no applause, no other sign of uh, support. I'm sorry, I see a hand, I don't know. Oh, thank you, hi, Heather. about this preamble. Um, this is obviously the Board of Selectmen's response and replacement for the human, or for the human rights resolution, at least at this time. Um, one of the big things that the drafters had come to, obviously we've talked already about how timely this is and we continue to talk about that. Um, I just had a question about what, do you guys have any thoughts or plans about how to promote this in the community and let the community know about the preamble? Are you planning to uh, put out a press release Really, something like that is just something that um, because I know we talked about you know one of the big things of the resolution was to let the community know that this is a safe and welcoming community. Um, so I was wondering what your plans were for that. I think it's a fine. That's right, Bob. All right. I think it's a fine idea to put it out as a press release, or at least put a pointer in the press release to the longer document. The policy document is I don't know five pages long, so um, that might be that, that certainly would be appropriate. We could send it out on the town on the town website. Yes, absolutely. So, it's not the website, but our Facebook yeah. page. And our <coughs> the intention is to publicize it. I'm sorry, if you get two guys at once. Go ahead, Dan. Dan. Bob, I don't know if everybody was here when you made the earlier comment about the interfaith meetings that might be happening. It might be worth okay. reading a synopsis of that. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Is um, further action we're, we're going to help spearhead? Starting last Wednesday evening is when I first heard of the second SWAT sticker incident. Um, up till then, I had approached it as a one time thing, it would never happen again, and of course, I was wrong very quickly. Um, the next day, I contacted a rabbi from Burlington that was an acknowledged leader, unfortunately, in these incidents. She had a lot of experience. Um, I basically told her, I would like to talk to you to seek your guidance on how to heal this community and what steps the community needs to take. I also called, contacted the Anti-Defamation League. Um, they had very similar thoughts, not surprisingly, since they've worked together, unfortunately, so many times. And um, she requested uh, that I come up with a couple of contacts, religious contacts in the community to have an initial meeting, which we have arranged the contacts, but not yet had a meeting. We may. Uh, I'm going to ask her tomorrow if she's going to allow a few more people. I don't know that the number is, is really a problem. And um, I'm not going to ask her to lead the conversation in the community, but if she volunteers, I would wholeheartedly welcome it. Um, we don't have a temple in Reading. I don't know how many different temples are used by residents of Reading, but she has told me pointedly, and I didn't know this going in, that she does have families in Reading that come to her temple. So I, I was actually, that was a nice coincidence. Um, so there is action upcoming, not by the Board of Selectmen or the Town Manager, but by this interfaith religious group that ATRAC will be involved with uh, once the initial steps are taken. Um, I, I do want to echo some comments uh, by some of my school colleagues, and I want to say this carefully. When incidents of hate happen, you have to be really careful how you describe them and publicize them in public, because there are copycats. Kids love to copy, they love to get attention. So I just want to throw that out there that while the comments that the police chief and the superintendent and I made were necessary, we do want to moderate our conversation and be careful not to encourage more behavior like this. And that's uh, things that we heard from experts in the school department that deal with kids all the time. They cautioned us early and said, be really careful how loudly you beat the drum much as you might want to it's not going to help the kids. So I, I took that uh, for what it was worth. So you'll see measured responses from the town. Um, I hope people let it all hang out through the interfaith uh, meeting that we'll try to have in June. And uh, we'll see what else we need to do, basically. Other comments? Lori? Um, so I'm Lori Hoden, and I've been on the Human Relations Advisory Committee for around 10 years. But I'm speaking as a Jewish mom, OK? And I have a daughter who is a senior. Reading High School, and um, we were members of Temple Shalom Emmet. So Susan Abramson, she vomits at our daughter Ruthie, um, all of our, all of our three kids. Um, and I think I'd like to talk to you a little bit about like what um, there was an article that Bob you referenced, and I actually have it. It's from the Boston Globe um, last year, and it chronicles what Rabbi Susan Abramson, Abramson did. Um, partnered with the Belmont Police Chief, and really created a kind of sea of change at um, Belmont. Um, and it, the article is called How a String of Swastikas Actually Made Bedford Stronger. And a key piece of her response was really empowering students to take a leadership role. She very much used the schools. And they talk about facing history in ourselves, which is a course that we have, a very popular course at our high school, um, which uses the Holocaust as a case study in human behavior. Um, and the Human Relations Advisory Committee, I know I'm really biased, but our daughter, as well as two other seniors, have had um, World of Difference students. So Ruthie and Jessica and Catherine, um, they've been our liaisons for the last three years. And they have been incredible. And they've had very close relationships with Adam Bakker. When he heard about the incident, he brought them in. And they did have meetings with the ninth graders and the Juniors and sophomores had MCAS, so these girls are going back after they've graduated to meet with the sophomores. And this is a partnership that is meant to educate students because I agree, unfortunately, you can read the history in a history book um, and it doesn't really sink in. There's so many atrocities, unfortunately, that we read about. So um, that these kinds of programs that are collaborative, like working together, so all the stakeholders work together, the selectmen, and the police and the clergy community, um, as well as the Human Relations Advisory Committee, as well as the students. That's the way that I think that we will really um, address these swastikas um, head on to provide 
students and young people with the skills that they need to make our town really truly welcoming. Other comments? Can I just want to bring up uh, one other thing I want to bring up um, that Susan said. Um, she was really happy. I didn't share this preamble with her, but she was really happy that the town was taking on these incidents with a positive outlook instead of saying, this is all the bad things. Don't do them. I agree that education needs to be focused on what you should do. You certainly can mention what you shouldn't do along the way, but it's got to be an action. This is the things you should do. This is how you should live your life. These are the things you want to do. Um, so she very much uh, wove that into the discussion, and I hope that that's how we move forward. Any other comments? Way in the back. Gary Phillips, uh, Wall Street. Um, there's so many different aspects to this issue that uh, I'm going to do my best just to be brief and weave together a number of points that I think would be helpful. Uh, first of all, I commend the selectmen for your reserve and your wisdom in simply not going too far. Uh, I know a lot of you, like Mr. Berman, feel very passionately about this. And I like to tell you that some of us who are in opposition to this resolution feel just as passionately. And hopefully I can advance a little better understanding as to the basic reasons uh, why there exists a fundamental difference. Uh, what is the, basically the fundamental point of disagreement some of us have? Uh, we all know the old adage, it's very often uh, a mistake when our well-intended actions can have unintended consequences. Uh, I'd like to use Mr. Berman's amendment as an example to uh, emphasize the point I'm making here. Um, when you mandate that you have to critically challenge and you empower government uh, greatly to go ahead and address issues, what you're doing simultaneously is you're actually empowering individuals to manipulate the board. A lot of us see this swastika uh, activity as just a prank. And we feel that it could and should be used as a teaching moment, an opportunity to go ahead and talk about history and uh, underscore the reason why our value systems individually are opposed, of, are opposed to that kind of action. Um, we still have to remember that the, a group like the ACLU has gone ahead and said in the Skokie incident that Nazi demonstrations are covered under free speech. I think all of us have to be uh, what the Swastika sticker stands for. Uh, there are other emblems. I can tell you how the Crescent should be something that Christians and Jews are repulsed by, how the hammer and sickle is a symbol that a lot of us can be repulsed by. And this all brings us into the area of discretion and selective enforcement. And I think that it's best that we do as the Board of Selectmen did and reserve ourselves to stating our basic values <coughs> and let history, the private sector, the religious people address the issues from there. Okay, but let education really be the, the best, most favorable recourse when addressing problems like this. So thank you for your reserve, and I'd say your wisdom. I think you did well. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I'd like to, uh, you said, ma'am, you said something earlier that made me feel kind of sad about a Reading, Reading, I'm not singling you out, I mean, uh, you said that we're a town divided and we're very divided, and that, that made me feel really sad, but I, I, I picked that up and I, I sense the tension in the room and people disagreeing with each other. Um, I'd just like to say that um, I, I try to view it um, I mean, I think throughout our history we've been divided a lot of times, but we seem to muddle through somehow. Um, but I, I try to think of us, the Red, you know, Redding Town, as uh, a big extended family who who have a lot of arguments. But at the at the end of the day, uh, we all sort of get along fairly well. I, from what I see. Uh, other comments of the board? Please wait till you get recognized before you speak. There you had a comment. Yeah, I just. Just want to respond to the to the last speaker um, uh, talking about you know, critically you know um, cri critically challenged challenging. Um, we were fortunate. You might not have been here before when I gave the liaison report that uh, 
Coolidge Middle School eighth graders had the wonderful opportunity to hear from um, uh, Dr. Anna Ornstein, who not once but twice survived the selection at Auschwitz. And when those students asked her, how did this happen? And what can we prevent it, how can we prevent it from happening again? She talked about how the leaders in her town, when the Nazis came in, just said, oh, this will go away, this will go away, and didn't respond. And then before you knew it, they were taking her family away in trucks. So when you say that um, we shouldn't necessarily critically challenge, there are times when leaders did not critically challenge. And that's, and, 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 and results happened that were not pleasant. I'm not saying that that's gonna happen in Reading, but what I'm saying is, is that if the leaders are not going to do that, then who's going to? So that was my response to the other comments. I'm sorry. Thank you, Carl. I couldn't see other comments. Hi. Sorry to be back here anymore. Uh, Carl Weld, uh, 60 Highland. Um, if I could, you know, I was just comments to the board. Please. Yes, going to stand here and listen. But if I could reply to Mr. Berman's comments. Sure. The difference between what happened in Nazi Germany was it was the national government. It wasn't a citizen. It was the national government policy that came in. So I would like to think that if Congress mandated the rounding up of Reading citizens for a particular belief of their own, that U5 would stand up and oppose it. Thank you. Other comments? Linda. Uh, Linda Snow Doxer, Beaver Road, Reading. Uh, first, I want to also thank. Um, Mr. Arena and the board for, and the town manager and especially the police chief for taking action um, in response to the swastikas. Um, and I'm very proud to be also a school committee member and I'm very proud of our immediate reaction, the superintendent and Adam Baca, the principal's immediate reaction to the swastika in the high school. I think that in the press release, which I just cannot thank you enough for, um, it mentions that there's an increase nationwide, actually internationally, in, in, um, dis in harassment, hate, and anti-Semitism. And so this is not just, as Mr. Berman said, a Reading problem, it's an international and a national one. In response to the um, description about um, the Nazis being a national organization, I'd like to bring in what Dr. Ornstein said on Friday. She said that with no followers, Hitler could not have gotten anywhere. It was the propaganda that started in the 1930s, which convinced their neighbors, their friends, to shut their eyes, as Elie Wiesel would say, the eyes at the window. So people just turned their heads and let their neighbors be taken away. And then they eagerly took over their houses and their things. And so that started 10 years before the concentration camps did, and multiple times. And we are at a prime time. And I'd like to say that the only aisle we should be standing across is in a theater, and I said this to Mr. Arena, where we're all talking to each other to work out how to live together and to make sure that this kind of hate doesn't happen again. In terms of the power of words, words are not just words. There's no just about it. As you were given um, the pyramid of hate um, what, a couple of meetings ago, words start the escalation to the violence and to the, the um, dis the group discrimination, the stereotypes, and they escalate to genocide. Now, hopefully we're going to get nowhere near that. We're not going to get anywhere near that if we stop it at the words. And so I was so thrilled when I read the quote in the, in the press release that said, as leaders in the town of Reading, we are committed to ridding our community of hate and hateful speech. That means to come together and have uncomfortable discussions about how we treat each other and what words and symbols really mean. Does the average teenager truly understand the hate and violence associated with the swastika? Perhaps not, but it's incumbent on us 
to teach them. Well, that's right. I think education is key. But I think we have to recognize the problem and recognize the words that lead to that. And I think, I'm sorry that Mr. Berman's amendment did not pass because I have to agree that what's there is just a statement of, well, we can if we want to, if it's timely, whatever, if there's nothing in our way, as opposed to making a leadership commitment towards the education that I think everybody, I can't speak for everybody, that I hope people understand the importance of. That I don't think that this um, preamble takes us to that commitment. And I think that what it's not going to do tomorrow is tell the minorities in our town that they're safe and that we will be there for them. We are not going to be the eyes at the window. We're not going to watch them not get the jobs or not be trusted. And, and in this preamble, I actually had an issue with the they. They will adopt. They will work hard. There is no they. We are a we. And until we accept that and do something when people are slighted, when they're marginalized, then we, we could be a part of that pyramid of hate without us knowing it. In the 30s, no one expected genocide. No one expected it. It couldn't happen here. As Dr. Ornstein said, Germany was an amazing democracy. The Jews were valued. I don't know how they felt about the homosexuals or those that were handicapped or anything, or the gypsies. Those all became the targets. As Mr. Arena said, it wasn't just the Jews. It isn't just a Jewish issue. I'm thrilled that you brought Dr. Abramson in, and I look forward to the Human Relations Advisory Committee being to work, being able to work with the Interfaith Council to make the education happen. Thank you, Thank you. Just want to make sure everyone gets to talk once before we get any done. Anyone else who hasn't spoken yet? I, I've spoken once, but uh, hang on, I Chris. Chris, Chris, I'm sorry. I, I just want to make sure everyone who hasn't spoken. I don't mean to. Oh, okay. Let me get uh, sure folks who haven't spoken. <coughs> Anyone who hasn't already spoken? All right. Oh, All in the back, things. gentlemen in the back. Bob Hayes, Seven Thirty Nine Pearl Street. <coughs> I think on the tail of that, it's important to also know that one of the things that was took away from everybody was free speech. Way in the back. I don't think. Yesterday was Veterans Day. Let's not forget the blood and the sacrifice. Could you could you introduce generation? Could you introduce your introduce your name? I'm sorry, sir. I don't mean to cut you off. Thank you. Let's not forget. Yesterday was Memorial Day. Let's not forget the sacrifice, the blood, and the suffering of the World War II veterans who lost arms, legs, limbs, and brothers who fought to free Germany to fight fascism, to fight Nazism. We can't forget that. And I think that we're going a little too far with some of these resolutions. I think we're going to stifle free speech. We're going to stifle this community. And I think some of the people who are most intolerant are the leaders in this movement. Please keep your comments directed to the chair. Any other comments, sir? Please stay and give your name. My name is Dan Doerr. I live at 519 Main Street. Um, I, I can get behind the preamble. Um, I, I think it, it hits on the points that I'm concerned with. Um, as far as the proclamation goes, um, I, I think the parents in this community, it's a very high caliber community, I think the parents do a very good job of instilling the values on their children that we all, we all agree is, is important to us. I can't get behind the proclamation um, because I think, as uh, Mr. Russo says, I think that's a fight that's going to happen down the road if we pass this, namely uh, uh, a uh, sanctuary city and, and, and down that path. And I, and I don't think we need to go there either. So I, I, I think that uh, I'm against the, the proclamation, and I think you should be against the proclamation too. Thank you. Any other comments, people that have spoken? I'm sorry. Chris, go ahead. Uh, I I, from the first time I heard this resolution. Chris, could you direct, but, direct your I'm comments sorry, here? I'm, I'm yeah. just so used to yeah. talking to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the thing that stood out to me is all I could think of is the, the stifling of free speech that is going across America. 
I mean, would these people that want free speech, diversity, are they willing? Are they willing to listen to people that have opposing view? Look at the speakers that have tried to go to colleges that have have not been allowed to give their views. The views are different. Yes, they're different from maybe a lot of people, but they have a right. When we go to college, we used to be able to toss up ideas and say, okay, which one do I go along with? Instead of saying, only one way is the right way. My way is the right way. I know more than you are. You don't read the right papers. You don't watch the right TV programs. And, and this is what I'm seeing in our country. Look at, I mean, I can, I don't have them right off the top of my head, but just the other day, um, um, a speaker was stopped from, from talking at a college. People turned their backs to them. And, and, and are we going to have that here in Reddit? Because are you going to say, no, we don't approve of what they're saying? And this is what I'm, uh, this is from the very beginning of this, this resolution. That's all I could think of. We are our two opposing views, and this is all, a lot of this has come up since January of 2019 uh, this year. Other comments? 30 Here. seconds. Uh, You've already spoke the second time. I'll give you 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to give police chiefs. And then Sherry, you're up after the police. <laughs> police chief Sagala any more work. But we ought to have some data discussing what the crimes are in the last few years to determine how big this problem is. You can't act on a plan without knowing how big the problem is. Got it. Thank you, sir. Sherry. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sherry Vandenacker, 271 Summer Avenue. My daughter and my son are both in middle school, and they have a wide range of friends. And one thing that's been rather heartbreaking about this is they have some friends who are ready to go to high school. They have Jewish friends who have just done bat mitzvahs who are ready to go to high school. Those kids are scared to go to high school. They're scared about how they're going to be received in this community. They're hurt. They feel excluded. And I think that we can talk amongst ourselves, but our kids are looking to us to set an example and to speak out and to make them feel safe and to make them feel welcome in the high school, in their school, in their school, in their school. And I think that we really can't lose sight of the impact this is having on our kids. Thanks. Any other comments? Going once? Going twice? All right. One, I'm sorry. Amy. <laughs> Yeah, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ann Landry um, of Center Avenue. Um, with all due respect to your comment that this was the best um, statement we could have hoped for, the best statement I could have hoped for would have been a human rights resolution. I do think it was a stronger statement and one that celebrated welcome for people across all lines of difference, specifically naming those kinds of difference such that people who cross those lines of difference would feel uh, welcome and included. I do feel very encouraged by the statements that our town leaders have come out with um, in response to the swastikas, and I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for those, those strong statements. You know, um, since the human rights resolution has been talked about, I've also I'm a new mother, and I think about the kind of community I'm going to be raising my child in, and I really want it to be one of welcome and inclusion, and I am very much encouraged by uh, the way our town leaders are bringing in the Anti-Defamation League and other experts in this area to respond to this incident. So I thank you for that, um, and I hope that we can all really work to come together to make this community want and all of us work actively to work across all lines of difference, whether including ideological um, and including all kinds of protected classes and individuals who don't look like the majority in red. Thank you. Bob? Just to your point, Anne, I do want to share town council's opinion on one thing. Um, you know, his job isn't to agree or disagree with sort of the issue in the room. It's to protect the town's long-term legal 
he said as a concept, it's a really bad idea to list anything that you're going to protect or favor because what happens when someone's not on that list? So when you list a positive list, these are the people who are you know, under attack right now, we want to protect them. What happens when someone's not on that list and they take up the policy and they say, Redding, I'm going to sue you because you didn't list me on this list. As silly as that sounds, that's his job. He has to think of all the bizarre cases he's seen out there and think of, let's find out a way to word this to protect the town's legal interest. Maybe it doesn't make the statement as strongly, um, but is there a real difference between listing something very specific or making the same statement and let the reader interpret what that class was for? So, you know, the, again, the things from Barry and John, this is not what they sent in. This is what town council sent out. And some of the things were changed for specific legal reasons. Yes. Hi, Caitlin Macario, A Street. Um, I'd just like to say that the protected classes that were listed in the human rights resolution were pulled directly from Massachusetts law. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments? That's why it doesn't. Yes, um, just. I think it's normal that a lot of middle school kids feel a certain amount of trepidation about embarking on high school. But I'm curious where the specific Jewish middle schoolers that you reference got apparently a much higher level of fear about going down to high school. What is it that triggered that? Uh, just to, I'm sorry, I should have jumped in sooner. Please direct your comments. Right. I'm sorry. I'm so fast. I'm, so I'm making the mistake of listening as opposed to sharing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I, Mr. Thank you. I, I think that. Uh, from the swastikas being found at the high school, knowing that they're going to the high school as Jewish students. We're all reducing to the swastikas again. Well, um, yeah. I don't know. That's pretty powerful. Okay. Yeah. Laurie? Yeah. Um, to share a personal story, um, my grandparents, Sam and Rose Poden, they um, emigrated from Poland in the 19, early 1930s. And my grandmother was the youngest of 13 daughters, right? And in those days, you had to marry like in chronological order. So they kind of shoved her to the back of the, um, their house, the home. And um, so she eloped with my grandfather. So they eloped, and they came to um, New York City. Um, and all those sisters were all killed in Auschwitz. My father did not have any grandparents at all. My grandparents both did not have any, like, both of his parents' families were wiped out by the Holocaust. And I'm a teacher. I teach history. I teach, I have taught from the Basic History and Ourselves curriculum. And it's all about, like Linda was saying, um, that Hitler used democracy to destroy democracy, using propaganda, and really dehumanizing Jews, making them the other so that ordinary Germans like doctors and lawyers and women and children, they were able to really just kind of segregate, isolate, ghettoize, and finally annihilate Jewish people like my father's grandparents and all his aunts and um, from my, you know, my, my grandmother's sisters. So when I see the symbol, the swastika, it really makes me feel afraid. And I'm brought back to Poland and I just, you know, so it's like a personal reaction because it's part of my family history. Um, so it's just like, I understand what you're saying. It's like, oh, come on, it's just a symbol. It's probably a prank. Like some kids are probably doing it as a prank, but the impact for me as a Jewish person who lost, my father lost a lot of his family, um, it has a really personal impact. It makes me feel afraid. Other comments? Linda? Miss no dot, sir. Um, I just want to say, too, I want to take it out of just the context of the schools, that we've had swastikas in other areas in town. And one of my first responsibilities as the chair of the Human Relations Advisory Committee was to follow <coughs> up on a complaint of a swastika that was in a public bathroom. And to do so, I went into a residence nearby, and I interviewed a group of six people that lived in that residence. And they were people whose families had been lost in the Holocaust, people whose families were soldiers, oops, sorry, 
soldiers who had gone to liberate the camps. They were people for whom the impact was real and immediate, and it impacted how safe they felt living in Reading. Was that incident reported to police? It was. Thank you. <coughs> Any other comments? Six minutes. You have one right now. Oh. Okay. Um, correct me if I'm mistaken, but what I've been trying to do is just compare this uh, newly suggested preamble with the, pro the proclamation resolution. And um, it, with the new preamble, this one has teeth. It has clarity and it results in action. The proclamation lacked enforcement. So you can see this is positive. This complies with equal protection under federal and state laws, as far as I understand it. But the other um, could have violated the First Amendment constitutional rights of freedom of speech. This one makes reviewing uh, discrimination and understanding discrimination laws easier by creating a brief comprehensive document for the entire community where the, pro the resolution failed to fully cover the entirety of our community's views on discrimination. This one is bipartisan. It's free of ideology and politicalization. Where the other had the appearance of partisan politicalized and at times divisive. And this measure makes no assertions regarding the opinions of citizens, where the other, as much as the promoters would like residents to have shared in all the tenets of the re resolution's view of multiculturalism, etc., it falsely suggested that all Reading residents feel a certain way, which they do not. Any other comments? Um, before we break, I just want to encourage you all to look for the announcement um, for the forthcoming event that Bob mentioned earlier. That the uh, uh, religious leaders themselves will develop. I think it, I'm, I'm planning on attending, obviously, as just a uh, spectator, but I'd encourage you all to do. I'm fascinated with what I'll learn. And some of the conversation here tonight just speaks to the passion. Um, but Barry. Yeah, and um, I learned this a long time ago that when you're really dealing with really difficult kind of um, community shattering kinds of things, that it's often easy to sort of entrench in the way that you think and the way you feel. So what I would ask you, and what I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing, what I'm gonna ask all of you here tonight <coughs> is to find somebody who you might not agree with or who might be on the other side of what we were trying to do here in the hallway exchange an email and a phone number, and between now and the time that we hopefully convene in June, have a cup of coffee, have a conversation. Listen, the hardest, com it, it, the hardest conversations are the ones that should start first. And so, um, you know, maybe that's wishful thinking, but I think if, if, if folks can do that tonight, I think when we do reconvene in June, maybe there'll be a little bit of an understanding, and there won't be an aisle, and there won't be a divide. You know, when we wrote this, we tried to make it as, 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 as one town, one Reddit. Um, and I think that rather than sort of dig in, we should lean in. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I know I have a few people in mind who I may reach out to. I encourage you folks to do the same. And again, thank you so much for bringing this to our attention and coming out and, and really, you know, putting us on the forefront of trying to work together. Thank you all very much. Those of you who haven't had enough of the board of selectmen meeting, you're welcome to stay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> take five just to clear the board.
Still working? Yes. Oh my God. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is over until the next thing. Oh my God. Well, Move to approve the minutes of May 7th. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. 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 Lisa, yeah. Hey, John, you better gavel her now. She's <laughs> getting the wrong role. Seriously? Yes. I know. I'm sorry. Eileen, we just, ha we just have five minutes we can get through. Okay. Second Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I guess you can't come. Too bad. Thank you. No cake Thank for you. you. Great you. meeting. You have your face thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to let me talk. I can't <laughs> talk. I'm sorry. I can't sit over I thought it was over. <laughs> nice job. Thank you. Everyone. You know, you, when you see the Speaker of the House pounding on it, yeah, now you know why. On a larger scale. Are you guys? <laughs> a bigger stick. I, I was going to bring up my three pound slides. Move to approve the minutes of May 17, 2017 as amended. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have two seconds, so I'll take one of them. Um, any comments on the minutes? Any edits? Okay, I have a second. I hear no uh, further discussion. All those in favor of the minutes, raise your hand. Uh, so four yes, four zero one is the vote. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I think that's all the business in front of us tonight. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. We're done. Is there a, can we make a, a request for the, the board consider a future agenda item? Uh, certainly. Uh, the idea of reinstating Kino or instating mm -hmm. Kino, I don't know if it's ever been uh, instated in the past. Yeah, I remember long ago it was, um, ago. I don't the, know for sure. We, have, no. we do we not have Kino to go. We have the ability to grant licenses, I think we, yes. we have chosen. When I was young, prior boards of well, It's timely it. too, because we've got, uh, you know, we've got a lot of, um, we actually have quite a number stores and you know things have changed in the way their revenue streams work and this is an opportunity for them to reinstate some revenue streams that are perfectly legal to, it's, a, a, it's a lottery it's a yeah, yeah and we yeah, have but we, we have to reinstate their ability to have in store right right now if you want to sit down you've got to go to North Reading right Stoneham Wakefield or Wilmington a prior, you can't do that here a prior vote of this now. board um, discontinued that when I was when I moved to Reading in '81, it was available in the convenience stores. I'm not sure. Oh, so it's that long. I mean, so well, no, yeah, sometime it's, between it's about 15 now. years before it came on the board. Years, I think they Bob? Yeah. And Caitlin's done some research, as Paula had before. Um, some past board in the not too long ago future granted Kino to go licenses, but said no to Kino. Yeah. So well, the discussion so was: so you're going to make the person leave and then come back? And the answer is yes. So when is our next board meeting? Two uh, you have two in June, and we'll discuss it then. So why don't we plan on, on one of those two yep. that have this discussion and have a formal board? Can I tell you, I've done a little research, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, installations in from the Lottery Commission happen in June and January. The installations, you mean the awarding of whatever credentials? No, it's not an award of any kind. The, the installation physical installation of the physical, physical equipment. equipment. Okay. So you're on the first year. year. I don't and know. So, you know. They may have already missed that. I don't know. No, I actually works. know that they have. Okay. Um, so would if it, would we I could get it on our next yeah, agenda. put it on yeah. it. I mean, I'm going to say I, it's like Janu uh, June 13th, I think. June 13th, yeah. man. You know, we, I, I mean, I, for one, have a great interest in, you know, trying to help these small, they're all, in, all the ones who currently have Kino on, on the road are small independent. The, mo the, mo the mobile station on West Street has it, doesn't mm -hmm. it? They did. I don't know if they still have it. P and S has it. No, they no, they don't have it. They don't have they don't have Kino at all. Kino on the go. The mobile station oh, would be on the, oh, on the go. You're talking about the one on West Street. Yeah. All of them have it on the go. It's the last thing in Reading. Maybe you buy a card and scratch it or something. 
No, you you can can buy, you can you buy a ticket, ticket, you leave. Yeah. You okay. then can look on the website to see oh. see what contest you entered. Got it. Okay. Whether you won or lost, and then you have to come back. No, so do your Apple TV, HBO, Go. Yeah. Well, and no, I, I tell you what it really comes down to is that say, oh, yeah, look yeah, at you one. know that kind of business is being driven has been driven for over a decade out of town. Right. Yeah. And while you're sitting there, you buy a sandwich and a bag of chips. Precisely. Exactly. Or have dinner. Yeah. So it makes up for the flavored tobacco. They're not. So why um, is is the revenue from that lottery game different from the regular lottery, where where basically it all goes into the pot and comes back? On a formula, or do you get to keep a percentage? No, it's like everything else that they do, they get a percentage. It's lumped in. And the town, by the way. The house gets a cut. And the town you know, the house gets a cut. The well, house no, always gets a cut. Well, no, because in, with the other lottery, it, it all goes to the state, but, and then it comes back by formula. Yeah, it's not. You don't get to keep. It's not as clear as They used to give you specific state aid to yeah, peg the lottery, and then they unpeg them. I was assuming that it's so this they don't I tell think, you anything. Yeah, I, don't, I, I actually can't. I mean, it's, I mean really. But It'll the point crazy. is, if this helps our small yeah, businesses even for that reason. Yeah. by doing something that's perfectly legal, yeah. and they, you know, it's done yeah. in every community around us, um, yeah. I, for one, think we certainly should engage giving them an opportunity. And from a timeliness standpoint, I mean, if we could enable them to have six months of revenue instead of not having it, mm -hmm. I think we should consider it at our next we'll meeting. We'll take it up at the next meeting. So not to be the, the, the was the ri rationale for not having is that you like it was <coughs> unsavory characters. Well, it's very uh, hard to it's very hard to a, determine the rationale. Personal dispute between one of the former selectmen and one of the people. Generally, how many? <laughs> and it, and it extended to personal preferences of the other. So. Bob, did you have a comment? Uh, I, what I'll have to do some research is I don't know if you have to if you only can approve it town wide or you can specify mm -hmm. convenience stores because restaurants. So it's not like the liquor. I don't know. Okay. I need well, to find that out. Kind of to that point. I mean, if you did it town wide, I mean, yeah. there are restaurants that border this town, yeah, right. literally within Kitties. within Kitties. a quarter of a mile, where That's people right. from this That's town right. yeah. go because while they're having dinner on a Friday night. Okay. Uh, you know. All right. Whoa. <laughs> Any other new business? Any other new business? <laughs> 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 Guys, to get punch drunk here. Any other <laughs> new business to come before the board? Um, could I sure. request another agenda item for next month or, or in, in four weeks? And that is the elephant in the room, the override, the whole word. I hate to say that, but yeah, we, um, we'll do it. That's fine. We have the, a public discussion about that yeah. um, or how we're going to sort of yeah. put our battle plan in. Barry and I met with the town manager. Barry and, I and the town manager met with the school committee uh, vice chair. Gail Dowd, by the way. Gail Wood has passed. I'm sorry. Gail Dowd. Dowd. Why do I? Oh, She's I a former school. That once it's an anagram. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's why. It's in my head. Oh, you're right. <laughs> it is. That's, that's why. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Almost. Um, Gail Dowd. Change that entry. Um, and we talked specifically about a acceleration of our normal budget cycle to try to get one information out sooner, get more information. And then try to get a um, more soap time for the for the community. So very much that um, we should try to talk about the provisional schedule we talked yeah. about today. But yeah. we have a version of that for our next meeting. Yeah. Um, John gave me some dates. Um, today. I don't know. Uh, he's, I'm sure he's got a vote of the school committee, but he looked in his calendar and said these would be reasonable. So, and you guys don't have to care about his date so much, but that helps us set up our dates. Right. So one of the questions for the board to consider. I really don't want to say anything other than what's your business. Um, are you interested in having any kind of a public budget meeting before we actually have a budget to give you? So, What do you mean by that, Bob? So historically, there has always been a town manager budget that you right. see. Now, it, it, it isn't in final form because the town manager is asking for your advice. Find any value in having a budget meeting with all the department heads without actually a final budget that is at least in draft form? Yes. Because yeah. if you have an earlier meeting mm -hmm. before I really can say exactly what's going to roughly happen, then we can do that at any time. We'll do that next month. Uh, so, so that would be before. I think it would be before January for but, sure. So, but it's after the department heads give you their. Well, 
Well, you tell me in what form no, you want to see it. I mean, I can show you a budget of department head requests. This is what the budget they would like. We didn't even do that last That's year. That's not a budget. Those you are do it for your reform. Yes. Okay. We, we normally have done that budget every year except last. There's no, no point. And then shown all the things that had to change in order to make a balance. And then that was information for the community. Here's the things we didn't do. Yeah. Um, you tell me what, and you don't have to do this tonight, just start thinking about it, what you're comfortable with having a public discussion. We'll do whatever you want, but I don't think I can have a final budget on December 1st unless we really start working soon. John? I, I would heartily endorse that process starting okay. next Anytime. month. Anytime. Okay. Anytime. Yep. Three weeks. I mean, to me, that kind of, we need to identify from our side of the street. Yep. What it is that our, I mean, I, so for example, today, I, I mean, I, I had a captive audience with, um, with our two chiefs. And it was great to be able to, you know, kind of stray off into that discussion, trying to understand, you know, personnel issues, for example. I think the sooner we have it with all of your team, okay, and just an open discussion, we're, it's gonna better equip us to, you know, and, and we're advisory to you on this anyway. Yeah, and anyway. honestly, you can have this discussion without any certain information from anyone. Again, we could do this in three weeks or whatever. I, I actually think we should start. I, I think it, I think there's no time like the present. I'm a little okay. confused. Are we talking meetings with, with Well, bringing leaders? in department heads department. and starting to have okay. conversations about their operation. That's, that's yes. fine. But, but that is it in a public hearing? So well, public no, hearing. it's at a meeting. Like no, this. At one of our meetings. You know, and we could actually, instead of concentrating two specific nights, we could just bring in one or two people at, you know, at, at a meeting. I think that's helpful because one is more leisurely, too. You might yeah. actually want to call somebody back with more yeah. granularity. Dan? Bob, are you getting a commitment from the superintendent and the chair and vice chair of the school committee to start a similar path soon? Work in tandem with us because we, we not, need to know what they want to do. Not what we just discussed here, no. We, we need to know what their discussions are going to be. I think I know what they are. They are willing yeah. and they believe they are able to uh, meet an earlier deadline than February 1st yeah. for submitting a, or for voting and on a budget. And if we, we're going to also have to talk about a save the date, and it's most likely at this point, if we're going to do an override, it'll be in April. Right? Yes. So nail that down instead, as opposed to. Well, that's, that's another question for you to consider. Are you willing to set? An override date, whatever it is, without a number. Only to save the date. <laughs> okay. In case we do an override. John? To rule I, out the other date. I think to that point. And then we set the schedule. The sooner we engage the discussion, the sooner we can get to that save the date. You okay. Because um, I, I do think it's something we got to look hard at. And so my question to you is is there anything, if we get started right away, that would prevent us, prevent you? actually, because at the end of the day, it's not, unlike the school committee, mm, it's yeah. the school committee's budget. Here, yeah. it's the town manager's bu budget well, and, the, and the selectmen act in an advisory role. Right. So my question is really to you about the budget that you ultimately have. It strikes me that we're going to have to have an A and a B. Yeah. Here, here's we one with an override, here's yeah. one without an override. Can we do that by the 1st of December? Well, I guess the effectively what it boils down to is instead of me having discussions with department heads in advance and then bringing something to you, we all have the discussion with the department head at the same time. I personally think that's a great So idea. that I'm not ahead of you, yeah. I'm exactly sitting next to you, I'm hearing what they need, and we're just doing it in some you know, different format. Do you know something, Bob, I think, and, and then I'll be quiet on this, but I think one of the things that the voters need is yeah. the clarity of process. They need to understand how do you get to a number? How, I mean, yeah. how do you make a decision how many firefighters you want to add or how many police officers you want to add or what what projects need to be, what needs to be done with the DPW? I actually think that the voters, yeah. when they can, usually you don't want to see the sausage being made before you eat it. Right. But I think in this case, it's very well, different. This, this community wants to kill the cattle that makes the sausage. Yes. I think you're right. <laughs> They've demonstrated that there. It's an interesting analogy. <laughs> <laughs> that really, they have demonstrated that to us. I, I would have no problem at all, and I welcome you to sit beside me and hear all that. 
where I would draw the line is if we're going to start having to make the cuts, that has to be a yeah. I understand. Yeah. fully thought about discussion. And we talked this morning about the, the so-called A and B plan. One, rather than call it A and B, you might have a default plan, which is without an override. Well, yeah, two budgets. So you, you still have two, but instead of an A and a B, it's the default, and if an override were to pass. So yeah, and I, I think in this case, we're going to have a much easier time if an override is going to pass. This is the budget. Yeah. Because to get to the other budget is difficult. Also, the, the superintendent laid out sort of a difficult, I mean, we could speed up our process a little bit. They're sort of constrained in the fact that um, they have the sort of the end of year reporting. Some of the reporting stuff is going to change. Yeah, that's a bandwidth constraint, less than the timing constraint, if you will. More people would make it better. Yeah. But yes, Andrew, to your point, our endeavor is one, to get there earlier, two, to get there with more granularity, more data, and make the public see all that because I think we get, this is it, right? This is yeah, it. My, the reason I brought that up was just so that we can reassure the town because we, you know, we've all been to town meeting and we know uh, the services that have been lost this past year. Just to reassure the town that this is how we're going. These are our plans to address it. And I think you know, the point of the budget that this is the budget if the override doesn't pass, I feel it's a hard mm. uh, to get it, and it's not, I understand it's complicated to do, um, but so that the town understands that the chores have been made. Yeah, and even if our, that complicated? Even if our next, um, um, depends how much time I dedicate to it and when it can start. Okay. You but don't need to sleep, do you? The reason, no. I say, the reason I say it's complicated is because then if we, if you point out if the if an override doesn't pass, you and you and you are going to lose your job. Yeah. So you got to be careful because you're now, yeah. identify, you're now creating a whole bunch of morale issues. Right. Yes. Yes. Instead, what you want to talk, yes. talk about impact yes. with Barb. Which is why we did the October. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the, the yeah, town, the town yeah. in the summer specified more or less what happened. Yeah. You know, we didn't name people, yeah. and mm -hmm. we were more careful when there's death, like a police officer or, right. or two, a firefighter or two. Yeah, but yeah. That yeah. doesn't yeah. identify so people. But, you know, if I said, you know, I don't even want to, the town manager, I'll pick on myself, then that's much more, okay, we know who that is. Right. As opposed to how yeah. many of something. Yeah. You know, how many so, teachers yeah. is, again, well, not identified. Maybe for our next program. meeting, though, it's maybe to sort of lay out, here's the thinking the going forward. This is, you know, this is when you can expect this decision to get made. So at least people then can start thinking about, you know, how they want to organize around it or, or you know, what's important to them. And, could you they'll take start asking questions too. They'll yeah, start asking the questions yeah. that you want them to ask. <laughs> Remember, we also promised to do a forensic I'm asking myself a question. Um, <laughs> by next meeting, could you have the notional schedule that John takes and maybe yeah. some of your own thoughts? Yeah. And if you think of areas where we could, they haven't been identified yet, like we talked about FinCom doing double duty in yeah. January to try to double that up. Um, February. So maybe yeah. you get done a week earlier, pick up another week there. Um, identify the crush zones that we can try to get some more room at. Yeah, we're going to put an override on an April ballot. Mm -hmm. It better get done in January. Or oh, absolutely. I, I mean, it's got to be in the street so that people can yeah, start to make right. decisions it's and a, ask it's questions. It's a, it's a, it needs a minimum of six weeks. Even before I, that, yeah. remember you did more if possible. In your address, you talked about the need to do, do surveys and focus groups. <laughs> uh, we need to kick that effort off. Right, I've got, I've got the beginnings of a set of survey questions. I'll send them to Bob and get your feedback. Right. Uh, the thought is that it's kind of a running survey. The summer's going to be done, a dead zone anyway, but yeah. maybe yeah. we throw it up and see what Well, no, I think we ought to I mean, roll, we can get, we can get a survey kind of agreed upon. You know, Friends and Family Day is a great opportunity to hand up. Go on the website, take the survey. I mean, you're going to have get the survey thousands of people. Got, got time to get it together by then? That's what people do now. Yeah. They won't even go to friends and family day. They're just well, no, but we let them know. They say, you can now go <laughs> on there and take it. Send them the tiny URL. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I think it's real important we communicate early and often is everyone has in their mind what they want out of an override. We're not doing a lot of that. So, yeah. you know, all day kindergarten was a topic that came up last time. You know, you asked for a big number. It did not contemplate all day kindergarten at all. No. So it's important that the community understands an override doesn't fix everything that you think you want. But don't you think that they want to know what it fixes? Absolutely. I mean, that's, yeah. we talked that about I that think this is the, as well. I think that's huge.
huge factor. The schools are going to be behind us, I think, in terms of getting the specificity of what it goes for, just because of their roll up, the way they roll up. We'll have that, but I think it's critical that the override plans say, here's the town number, here's what's in it, here's the school number, here's what's in it, here's the sum total. Yeah, we need to work, and I'm not suggesting we don't ultimately partner, but I'm suggesting that we have to go about our own business. Yeah. And so do they. Yeah. Um, in getting to the place that we need to get. Yep. Because I think what happens is, if we're kind of back and forth, neither of us are getting our work yeah. done. I think we've got to get our work done. Absolutely. And, and then we come I, back. I, I, I'm focused on trying to get this done by Christmas or by the first of the year. And we have some of this stuff, at least conversationally and directionally, out in the public. That's where we got to be. Yeah, I would like you to have your um, town department head meeting done by December, the end of December. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll come back with one meeting in January. Agenda saying, okay, here's, here's here it is. Here we yeah. go. Thank you, Andy, for bringing that in. That's good timing. Any other comments before we adjourn? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, I thought we did. No, <laughs> we have not done that yet. I'll make a motion. So, so we have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? 5 0 and I don't know what the real time is. 944. Thank you. 944.